And we say good morning to you. Welcome. We are live at Champion Chevrolet inside the studio, inside the showroom at Champion Chevrolet, the number one Chevy dealer in the state of Tennessee on this Tuesday. What did I say Tuesday? Thursday, November the 2nd, 2017. 52 days till Christmas. You have to shop till Christmas 2017. Show number 628. We're live here. Brand new savings this month at Champion Chevrolet. Uh, GM employee pricing on selected 2017 Silverados, Traverses, Expresses, Tahoes, and Suburbans. Got them on sale. 20% off select 2017 Cruises, Malibus, Sonics, and Palos, or 0% for up to 72 months in lieu of the 20%. Either way you want to go. GM employee pricing, again, on 2017. Got to get them out of here. The 18s are here, and so... Uh, they've been selling both, but if you'd like to get a great deal on a 2017 Chevrolet, you can stop by here at Champion Chevrolet or check them out on the web at championjc.com. I believe Cletus will come on and join us here in a little while. It is show number 628. We always dedicate our show to the man that hung on the cross, and so here's the verse of the day to get it going. Out of the book of Isaiah, it says, I am your salvation. Trust in me and do not be afraid. I am your strength and your song. You know, in this day and age, there's lots of reasons to be afraid. Look at the folks, bless their heart, they were jogging and running down that path in New York City. How were they to know what was going to happen, that it would be their last run or last jog? So, uh, and yet you can, you, know, you can't put your head in the sand. You got to move on and you got to, got to do what you got to do. But it says, "I am your salvation. Trust in me and do not be afraid. I am your strength and your song." Well, that's coming from the Lord Himself. That's pretty strong stuff. So hit that bell again. We have lots to go over today. Of course, the World Series Game 7. Man, oh, man, oh, man. Congratulations to the Houston Astros. But if you look at the Los Angeles Dodgers, whew, if you're a Dodger fan this morning, you got to be smarting because they let one get away big time. Goodness gracious. Hugh Darvish, very ineffective. Then, of course, you turn right around with Hugh uh, Darvish and you look at left on base and men in scoring position. So lots of, uh, lots of what ifs. But congratulations, and we salute the Houston Astros for getting it done and winning for 2017, the World Series on the road. And, of course, they dedicated the game to the folks in Houston who went through the hurricane and all the trouble in and around that. So uh, it's kind of a sentimental, cool thing. Plus, one of the players proposed to his lady, and she said yes. So all that coming up. We're going to take a quick break, come right back, and we're going to get going here. We've got lots, as we said, to cover, and we'll start in here next coming up with some folks at the Mountain States Health Foundation. Miss Tiffany's in the house. She'll join us coming up next year on the Tom Douglas Sports Show, show number 628, live at Champion Chevrolet on the Bristol Motor Mile in Johnson City and the Tom Taylor Sports Show. Blue Lizard Australian Sunscreen originated in Australia, where sunscreen standards are the strictest in the world. Although our products are now manufactured here in the U.S., we continue to adhere to the most stringent Australian standards to offer the best in broad-spectrum sun protection. Blue Lizard, the brand most recommended by pediatricians and dermatologists. Our smart bottle turns blue in the presence of UV rays, reminding you to cover up. You bring the sun, Blue Lizard brings the magic. Truck Month continues at Champion Chevrolet on the Motor Mile in Johnson City with unbelievable savings on a selection of over 500 new Chevys to choose from. 17 Silverado Crew Cab All-Star, 11,000 off MSRP, 18 Equinox, 6,000 off MSRP, 18 Trax, 4,500 off MSRP, 23% off 17 Cruising Malibu, 25% off 17 Sonic and Spark LS. Shop us online 24-7 and remember our Saturday parts and service hours. Champion Chevrolet on the Motor Mile in Johnson City where we leave you asking, how do they do that? Phil's Dream Pit, the quest for perfect barbecue. Do you like pulled pork? At Phil's, the pulled pork is cooked low and slow. We cook it all night, but we serve it fast. Our pulled pork is hickory smoked, tender and juicy. We serve the pork either as a sandwich on a bun or platter style with garlic toast. And don't forget to try our pork wings. They taste like a cross between ham and our sweet ribs. It comes as a meal, as an add-on, or part of our meat sampler platters. Pulled pork and pork wings. Just two great reasons to stop by Phil's Dream Pit. Eastern Star Exit off I-26, 349-6437. Phil's Dream Pit, the quest for perfect barbecue. At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, lives are changed one heart at a time. Learn more at fca.org.
Welcome to the Tom Taylor Sports Show. Thanks for being with us again on this Thursday live at Champion Chevrolet. Again, at GM employee pricing on select 2017 Silverados, Traverses, Expresses, Tahoes, and Suburbans. 20% off select 17 Cruises and Malibus and Sonics and Impalas or 0% for up to 72 months in lieu of the 20%. Cletus will come out and talk about it here in a little while. We're doing a double dip today. Of course, coming up at 5 o'clock, new start time. From 5 to 7 today, the Champion Chevrolet five-star football preview show. Big, big Friday night for high school football tomorrow night. We'll run down all those. Previewing also Chris McCall preview the Virginia Tech-Miami ball game. Maybe the game of the week in college football. Certainly one of them, that's for sure. Also, Joe Avento previews the Buccaneers and VMI on Saturday. Good chance the Bucks get a much-needed conference win. And so we'll talk to Joe about that later on. Kevin Harmon will preview everything going on and not going on in Knoxville. More problems for Butch Jones and this concussion protocol scenario we're going to take a look at here later in the show. And so Kevin will be here to preview the the uh, Tennessee Volunteers Southern Mississippi game coming up on Saturday night for homecoming at Neyland Stadium. Also, we've got Doug Fritz going to join us talking about all the high school football playoff games involving our local teams here in the region. And then also... Our co-host, Dave Anji, will preview the Region Region 1 6A or the Big East Conference games involving those teams, Science Hill, let's see, Science Hill, Farragut, Dobbins Minute, and Bearden, and their opponents coming up again tomorrow night. Everything starts at 7 o'clock tomorrow night, by the way, moving up a half hour for travel purposes, so 7 o'clock tomorrow night. All the games get going, and we'll tell you all about those coming up a little bit later <clears throat> in the show. Last night, Dodger Stadium, the Astros earned a 5-1 to one win over the Dodgers in Game 7 of the World Series. Houston led the Series 3-2, then lost Game 6 before bouncing back for a win in Game 7. First World Series title for the Astros. They've been around since 1962 in their second pennant for the Houston Astros. You Darvish, not very good. Came out first time in his big league career that he failed to complete at least three innings. I mean, this guy just didn't get it done from the get-go or at least strike out at least one batter. Did not do that uh, either Either statistic last night. Second game, I'm sorry, game three was the first time in Darvish's big league career that he failed to complete at least three innings and strike out at least one batter. The second was game seven last night, which obviously is a brutal statistic. Three and a third, nine hits, nine runs, eight of those earned. He got shelled, walked two, struck out none. If you want to lay an egg, Game 7 of the World Series is not the place to do it, and you Darvish certainly did. So he and Art Didmer, the only pitchers in history to make two starts in a single World Series and fail to complete two innings of work in either one of those. Didmer did it back in 1960 for the New York Yankees. Lance McCullers, the starter for Houston, not a whole lot better. Faced 13 batters in Game 7 and 7 reached base. Two and a third, three hits, no runs, struck out three, walked none. Problem with that was... He gave the Dodgers all kinds of opportunities last night. He even hit four, hit batsmen, four batters in two and a third innings. But none of those came back to haunt him. So when you get hit by a pitch or I mean, you get guys on base, we're getting ready to show you what was going on. So uh, these guys had a chance, no question. One for 13 with the runners in scoring position with the Dodgers. We'll have 10 on as a team. And so Darvish, again, just did not get it done last night. And so trying to see the stats. I got all these different stats here. I want to tell you and show you that mm, let's see what we got here. Nope. It's not that one. It's maybe it's on this page. I'm going to break it down for you the the way things went with guys on base. And let's see. It's right here. Anyway, McCullers not that effective as the starter for the Houston Astros. But again uh, let's see. Kershaw came out of the bullpen and threw four scoreless innings in game seven for the Dodgers. McCullers not so good. Here it is. Wasted chances. In each of the first three innings, the Dodgers had men on base. In five of the first six innings, check this out. First inning, leadoff double. Later had bases loaded, two outs, nothing. Dodgers, second inning, leadoff single. Later had runners on first and second, one out, nothing. Third inning, runners on first and second, no outs, nothing. Dodgers, fifth inning, runners on first and second, with one out, nothing. So, again, the Dodgers waste a lot of early chances. They, they got the McCullers, couldn't do enough. And, of course, obviously the Astros got all over. You Darvish. They went at five to one. Cody Bellinger. Woo! This guy struck out 17 times in the World Series, which is a new World Series record. 17 strikeouts. Cody Bellinger, not a good series. Four for 28, batting 143 for the Dodgers. And so it goes on and on. By the way, your MVP, and deservedly so, was George Springer. 
He is now the World Series MVP. Check out the turnaround of this guy. Coming out of game two, he was three for 30. He had gone 0 for 4 with four strikeouts in game one. After that, Springer went crazy. Eight extra base hits, three doubles, and five home runs. 29 total bases in the World Series. That is both new records. The total bases record was 25 held by Reggie Jackson and the late Willie Stargell. And so George Springer is the MVP of the 2017 World Series. His five home runs also ties the all-time single World Series record. The others to hit five homers in a single World Series, Reggie Jackson and Chase Utley. So this guy did it. And let's see, I want to show you this picture. This is really cool. I was showing Tim Kovenaver this before we went on the air. This was a picture. Here it is. This is a picture back in 2014. This is the cover of Sports Illustrated back in 2014. Check that out. It says in 2014, your 2017 World Series champs. It's three years later. And on the cover is now the MVP of last night. So, dee -doo, dee -doo, dee -doo. so there you go. 2017 World Series champs. There's George Springer on the cover of the Sports Illustrated. Was that printed last night? No, that was printed in 2014. So obviously somebody in Sports Illustrated knew more than everybody else did. And so the Dodgers have to scratch their head in the offseason wonder, what if, because they left again. Ten guys, they had one for 13 with runners in scoring position. And again, ten guys left on base. You Darvis didn't get it done. Astros did. Congratulations to Houston. And again, George Springer's the MVP. And one little side note to the, uh, to the game last night. After the game in this suite, almost teared up. Carlos Correa got down on his knee and proposed to his girlfriend as she started bawling and said, yes, I will. I love you. I love you too. So they all got syrupy and sappy and all that. So Korea dropped down to one knee and proposed to his girlfriend on the field during the World Series celebration. And here's a picture of her. It's not a very good picture, but there it is. And she's snotting and snorting and crying, so it's all good. So love was in the air at Dodger Stadium last night. <laughs> for the Houston Astros. We'll take a break. We'll come right back. She's here. We're going from the World Series to S'mores coming up on Saturday. What a forecast for this run on Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon. It's going to be great. We're going to talk to the lady again. Karen Hubbs joins us coming up next here. We're live at Champion Chevrolet. Tiffany Willis joins us coming up at the Mountain States Foundation. Carmichael's going to be by. Also, we're going to be joined by Dave Angie, and I think we're going to have a visit from Sean Whitten, the head football coach of the Elizabethan Cyclones. But Karen Hubbs, she joins us next here at Champion Chevrolet on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, lives are changed one heart at a time. Learn more at FCA.org. It's Chevy Truck Month Take Two at Champion Chevrolet on the Motor Mile in Johnson City. The savings and selection of over 600 new Chevys to choose from are at an all-time high. 17 1500 All-Star Crew, 11,000 off. 1715 All-Star Double Cap, 10,000 off. 18 Equinox LT, 5,000 off. 17 Traction Traverse, 5,000 off. Shop us online 24-7 and remember our Saturday parts and service hours. Champion Chevrolet on the Motor Mile in Johnson City, where we leave you asking, how do they do that? At American Import and Auto Repair in Johnson City, one of the eight areas of your vehicle that takes constant continuing education is the air conditioner on your vehicle. Well, you would think that AC would be a simple one, but it's getting to be uh, a lot bigger than just AC. It's, it's the management of the system, not just AC, but heat and everything. It's a lot more computer controlled than it used to be. It used to be just a little button on the dash that you pushed. Now there's all kinds of electronics involved in that. Braking systems it used to be fairly simple. Now some of the newer vehicles you have to have a computer to actually operate the braking system to make sure that it's okay after you've worked on it. Computer control in the, of the engine is becoming very important. There's a lot to that. Each one of these areas, are, the, the technology has just tripled and quadrupled in the last few years. It's hard to keep up. You really need to stay in the books and know what's going on with them. American Import Auto Repair, Johnson City, open six days a week. Call today at 913-3111. From the driveways where your kids play basketball and ride their bicycles to the parking lots at your local church or grocery store, Bracken Paving is an important part of many neighborhoods in our area. 
No matter how large or how small the job, Brecken strives for excellence in every service they provide. It's a foundation for a strong community. Discover the difference at Bracken Paving and Asphalt Maintenance. Give us a call or visit us online at BrackenPaving.com. Your life is always changing. You never know what shape it will take or how your financial needs might change. But if we talk about your investments and how they can provide for you and your family, the future becomes clear. At Wells Fargo Advisors, we believe conversation leads to financial clarity. Let's start a conversation today. Back in live with the Tom Taylor Sports Show. Thanks for being with us on this Thursday, show number 628. Let's get her on the screen because I'm not Karen Hubs. I ain't that pretty. So here we go. Let's put it right here. And there was. I was going to turn the camera. He's already there. I just had to turn the camera. Hello, young lady. Hey, How hey. are you? How are you? Fine. Good, 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 good. She's back with us. Again, you see on her shirt the goose chase. Mm -hmm. And we're going to show you the brand spanking new turkey trot t shirt That's coming right. up here. Just the a unveil. Minutes. There you go. The unveiling of the Turkey Trot T-shirt, probably the biggest running event in the area. Uh, no question, probably, not probably as it is, given it's a one-day single event. And so that's coming up Thanksgiving morning, which is three weeks from today. Oh, uh, yes. Can you believe that? You know, you used to freak me out. You'd be in February and say, oh, it's so-and-so many days to Christmas. And I'd be thinking how many events we had. <laughs> you always give me anxiety, but you haven't done that this year. 52 days. Well, I mean, you just started. Yeah. I'm doing all along. I just stopped going around. You're going to make you nervous. Thank you. When you come Chick-fil-A and go, stop it. Stop saying that. Okay, so I've stopped doing it. But it's good. I usually start February 1st and start the countdown. I give people a break for the first two months. So, anyway, we've got a big run coming up mm -hmm. this coming Saturday. The weather's going to be perfect. Checking the forecast, mm -hmm. going to be unseasonably warm, and so we've got a big run coming up. We do. Run. It's called the S'mores Run. It's the yummiest race in town. It truly focuses chocolate marshmallows and graham crackers, and uh, it's on the Tweetsie Trail, which if you've been in Johnson City, it's a beautiful place to walk, run, ride your bike, take your dog, stroll, or whatever. And so we have we start at the trailhead on Alabama Street, and we go three and a half miles down the trail, and there's a restaurant off the trail that's called the Smokehouse Barbecue mm -hmm. Restaurant, and so they've been partnering with us for three years now and uh, we cross a little bridge and have a big s'mores extravaganza there and we have lots of staff members there putting together a s'mores bar uh, with every sort of marshmallow you can think of and chocolate and we have recipes and that's truly it's just a fun event for the community come out and enjoy the fall and it's for people that doesn't they might not get into the half marathons that we do or some of the other races but I mean, you can't deny us more. Yeah. And so, and it's it's friendly to everybody. You can bring, like I said, your strollers, your dogs. You can walk it, run it. Just come out and enjoy the community, enjoy the fall air. It's going to be beautiful weather, and uh, we'll have some music. And uh, Smokehouse Barbecue will have, offer a barbecue dinner. It's ten dollars, and uh, we partner with Appalachian Service Project, which is. Mm -hmm. Its headquarters are here in Johnson City. Walter Crouch. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. But they will get. Uh, all the proceeds from that ticket. I mean, of course, a portion of it pays for the food, but they get the rest of it, and they would get p proceeds from the race, actually, too. So it's a fundraiser for them, but really it's just a community event, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're, we're over, I think we're 200 people right now, and so it's, it's going to awesome. be a, yeah, it's not a bad race for this for Johnson City. Yep, the S'mores, mm -hmm. S'mores Run 5K. It is three and a half miles. Half so it's miles. a little over a 5K. So the official title of the race is? The S'mores Run. The S'mores Run. Mm -hmm. okay. And um, run. we do give out awards, top three overall, male, female, grandmasters, masters, age groups. And uh, it's the only race in town that your awards is food. <laughs> and so we've teamed up with Buttermilk Sky Pie Shop, which is in Johnson City, mm -hmm. out of Knoxville. But um, they are going to give S'mores Pies to the top ten 
which is the top three male, female, masters, grandmasters, and then we have an edible treat for the age groups. So that's sort of our awards, and it's, it's the most unique race in John City for sure, in the Tri-Cities, really. Had feedback for you being on the show Monday. Folks said, a uh, s'mores bar, that's what she said. They said, wow, that sounds pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So anything imaginable you can put on a s'mores, a s'mores bar is going to be there, right? Well, we go on Pinterest, of course. Yeah. You know, most people do Pinterest. Mm-hmm. Find some recipes, uh, you know. I think there's, I've seen the Elvis s'mores, you know, where you put marshmallow, chocolate, and banana. banana. And then there's strawberry and cream, and there's a, a salty caramel. I mean, there's all sorts of things. And there'll be chocolate graham crackers, cinnamon graham crackers, rich crackers. I mean, <laughs> we bring it out. <laughs> if you're creative, this is the race this for you. Race for you. <laughs> That's exactly right. These s'mores run coming up on mm-hmm. Saturday afternoon, right? Yes, at 4 p.m. Normally it's the morning races. It's going to be in a Saturday afternoon. Weather's going to be perfect. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I read where it's going to be 60s, even no, 70s, low to mid 70s, mm-hmm. which is unusual for November, but we'll mm-hmm. take it. So That's right. It's going to be great. So it's not too late to sign up. You great. can walk it. You can run it. It's pet friendly. Is that yes. correct? Kid it is. friendly? It is. We're friendly to everybody. <laughs> We're just a bunch of friendly people. <laughs> but, no, we truly just want the community to just come out and enjoy themselves. That's what the purpose is. And uh, it's going to a good cause, and um, it's going to be a lot of fun. It'll be a lot, definitely a lot of fun. And the Smokehouse Barbecue is under new management, so this will be their opening night. But it's a limited, very limited menu based off of what we've asked for for this race. And uh, it's, it's, it's a good time. It really is. Coming up, Tiffany Willis is going to join us at the Mountain State's Health Foundation. Now, you can win a free car from Champion Chevrolet, but... For, we want to get that. If you can see that, I guess it is. Uh, am, I doing it, am I doing it justice? No. There it is. That's better. Uh-huh. Do you see the screen? And you know, it, of all the races is. that we're involved in, this is the only race that everybody starts asking, what's the shirt look like? <laughs> this is the official <laughs> yeah, unveiling the official. of the T-shirt. Up in the corner is the turkey's... Up and Adam. Legs? Yeah, uh, Up and Adam Inc. is actually the the owner of the Turkey Trot, and they hire us to manage it. But uh, it's the nonprofit group that gives money back to the community, and it all has to be health and fitness related. And they've given over a hundred and fifty thousand dollars away to the Johnson City, Washington County area uh, this past year. From proceeds, they gave uh, some money to Nice Water Children's Hospital to sponsor 10 schools for the morning mile program which the morning mile program is the kids show up at seven o'clock and they do a mile of activity before they go into school and it's uh, been proven to increase um, you know help with behavior issues but also increase test scores and just overall health so that's that's a positive thing that we've been got involved with uh, they also created the turkeys in training which is a kids running clinic that happens around national running day in june and uh, of course the turkeys there you know uh they also gave some money to etsu center of excellence for sports science and coaches training and they put together olympic day because it's the home of the olympic training center for johnson city um they also are developing a bicycle program for under-resourced kids that is going to take place out of memorial park community center um and then they have a run, jump, and throw program, which is tied in with track and, uh, USA Track and Field. And then uh, last but not least, they gave some money to Memorial Park Community Center, the Senior Center, for, um, it's called TWAL, which I think is a weird name, but it's Technology Wall. Mm-hmm. And it's a um, interactive, it's almost like a video game, but it gets kids and seniors moving and just do different activities of, you know, I don't know, just floor hockey and all these different things uh, some also called the beam uh, the beam which sometimes you go to chick-fil-a which is one of your friends and they have a beam system for kids and it gets them moving and so we got one of those at memorial park community center now all this coming up thanksgiving morning now it is the t-shirt when it says turkey trot right there, that yeah. is an actual map of Johnson. it is it cool. is it does it doesn't print too well on that t-shirt but if you look at the print like the actual print stuff we have out it's from a 1929 map of johnson city and uh we believe this is the place to be on thanksgiving day we average close to 4,000 people every year for this race or at least the past few years we've averaged about 4,000. but um it's truly a community event they come out and they see people they only see once a year and that's at the turkey trot mm-hmm. um our friends at wjhl and josh smith is our mc and uh, we've had wedding proposals we've had well Actually, we had a couple that met at the turkey trot. They dated for a year, and the next year came back, and he popped the question on stage in front of 4,000 people. It was pretty well, neat. Cool. I was trying to get them to come back the following year to do the wedding, but they wouldn't they do it. But, we, I mean, it's just a truly a fun thing, and people dress up. We have a guy that wears a, um, oh, God. 
gosh, Pilgrim Outfits, but the uh, Mayflower, he's worn the Mayflower for the past three or four years. He's one of the school teachers in Johnson City, so it's just fun. It really is, and it's another event just for the community. You can walk, stroll, bring your dog, but all these dog-friendly events, please be good owners and bring a bags leash. and leash and that bag sort of thing. <laughs> poop bag and yeah. leash. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. To be perfectly blunt, mm -hmm. a poop bag and a leash. So there you go. Now, we're three weeks from today from the event. Mm -hmm. We have still have oodles of time to get signed up. We do. Right? We do. They can go online to jcturkeytrot.com or through our website. Uh, we have a page on there specifically for the turkey trot. Also, if you want to save some money and save a stamp, you can go in Johnson City and go to the Wellness Center in Johnson City, which is in the MedTech Corridor near Franklin Woods Hospital. You also can go to Olson's Martial Arts Academy, which is downtown Johnson City near, um, uh, gosh, I think um, Southern Barbecue is there. Sorry, I was, had a mind blank. Um, but anyways, in that little shopping center off Cherry Street. Um, and then Memorial Park Community Center in Johnson City, which is where we'll hold, hold packet pickup. Um, they can register there as well. There you go. It's all coming up again. That's three weeks. We'll have her back on for that event for sure between now and Thanksgiving morning. But coming up this Saturday, the S'mores Run, again, starts at 4 o'clock. And one more time, how do we get registered for that? The S'moresRun.com or go to our website, thegoosechase.org. We will have to shut down online registration so our buddy Hank can get all the bibs together and timing chips and all that. And that happens later on this evening, I think around 9 o'clock. But they can register in person at our packet pickup, which is Friday and Saturday. And they'll need to go to our website to see those times because, honestly, I don't remember. <laughs> my, my staff just says, show up, and I'm there. There you go. And you do it, do it. Yeah. She's had a great year, and so she's going to cap off the year with this event, of course, the turkey chop, and then kind of lay low and re regroup and get ready to go for 2018. So good luck Saturday. The Thank you. The great. I'd say you have a whole lot more than 200 people there. I think you well, have a lot more. We, I tell you, we found – all of our numbers this year, we've been blessed that they've increased from last year. Uh, but we have about 40% of our registrations happen the last two weeks. It's amazing. Last year, we were at 983, two weeks out. For Turkey Trot, we ended up with almost 3,800. Um, you know, we've had races where we'll be at 300 and we end up with 660. So everybody waits the last minute. And we try to prepare for that. But if you do get a packet pickup and we're out of your shirt size, please forgive us. But we've really tried to bump up our numbers to make sure we cover everybody. Sure. And we think we're good, but then you never know. You never know. <laughs> That's a happy problem you run out of It is. It is. It is. Taters. Thank you, friend. She's a sweetheart. We'll take a break. Come right by. Karen Hubs again this coming Saturday, the S'mores Run mm -hmm. at 4 o'clock. Again, you heard the website to go to. Quick break. Tiffany Willis joins us coming up next year. We're live at Champion Chevrolet inside the studio, inside the showroom at Champion Chevrolet, show number 628 at the Tom Toe Sports Show. At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, lives are changed one heart at a time. Learn more at fca.org. American Import and Auto Repair in Johnson City takes care of both male and female customers, but owner Kim Smith says they have a special care and concern for ladies. Being a female in what's considered a man's business, I understand the trepidation that women may have when they come to the shop. They feel like they don't know about cars, they might be intimidated, but that's not the way we do business. Everybody's treated the same. We take the time to explain anything that they have questions about, the repair, the process, the part. We want to make sure people are comfortable with what we're going to do to their vehicle and that they understand. We do cater to women in a sense. We have a real nice waiting room with nice Keurig coffee and flavored creamers, air-conditioned, cushioned seats, TV, everything a girl could want while she waits for her car to be fixed. American Import and Auto Repair in Johnson City open six days a week. Call today at 913-3111. It's Friday night at 7 o'clock. You've been involved in a car accident. You may be out of state on vacation or just a few miles from home. What do you do? Who do you call? At Farmers Insurance Group, one call is all you have to make. Hello, this is Jim Klein, an agent with Farmers Insurance. It's called One and Done. 
You don't have to wait till Monday morning to file a claim. You can make the initial call and we'll begin right away to help you. We assist you in moving the vehicle to a certified repair shop, getting you set up with rental car, and informing your agent. Then here at the staff at Jim Klein Farmers Insurance, we follow the claim through to the end. It's that easy. One and done. We're your one and done location for all your insurance needs. Auto, home, life, commercial, workers' comp, and bonds. We can help you with all your insurance needs. Give me a call today, Jim Klein, Jim Klein Farmers Insurance at 247-5400, your one and done location in Kingsport, 247-5400. Now available at Chick-fil-A, the crossings of North Johnson City, the Hash Brown Scramble, the first breakfast bowl with Chick-fil-A. The Hash Brown Scramble, a hearty breakfast option made with Chick-fil-A signature tot-style hash browns, scrambled eggs, a Monterey Jack and cheddar cheese blend, and a choice of sliced Chick-fil-A nuggets or sausage. Served with jalapeno salsa, the scramble can be enjoyed in a bowl or as a burrito. The Hash Brown Scramble Bowl, 30 grams of protein when made with nuggets. The bowl and burrito start at 349. Served until 1030 every morning, Monday through Saturday. The hash brown scramble or burrito, again at Chick-fil-A, the crossings in North Johnson City. Again, thanks to Karen Hubbs. We appreciate her stopping by the goosechase.org, and we thank her so very much for that. High school football, here we go. Let's run them down for you. The class, we're going to have Carmichael in here to kind of break them down to Dave Angie coming up here in a little while. Again, tomorrow night, everybody starts at 7 o'clock. Single A, Midway at Cloudland. You have Hancock County at Coalfield. Oliver Springs travels to Jellico, and Greenback has a bye this week because Unica is ineligible to participate, so that's an empty slot. And 2A football, Sullivan North tomorrow night hosting Cumberland Gap. The Hampton Bulldogs travel to Rockwood. Also in 2A, Happy Valley home to Oneida. And South Green, the Rebels travel to Meigs County. And 3A football, Johnson County, the Longhorns hosting Northview Academy. Also coming up tomorrow night, Unicoi County, the Blue Devils will travel as they'll go to the highway. And again, Blue Devils will be on the road at Knox Austin East, the Battle of the Roadrunners, which is a tough place to go and a tough place to play. So that's coming up again. Uh, yeah, tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. West Green hosting Kingston and Claiborne will be on the road at Alcoa. So that's what's coming up again in 3A football. 4A tomorrow night, we've got Greenville hosting Eastridge. Chattanooga Central uh, hosting the Solomon South Rebels. Elizabethan home to Sequoia will be there kind of checking out that game, giving you some live updates for the game coming up tomorrow night starting at 7 o'clock. The Sequoia Chiefs and Elizabethan. Also, you've got coming up tomorrow night, Granger going to Anderson County. That's in 4A football. 5A football, Daniel Boone, the Trailblazers, playing host to the Knox Central Bobcats. Morristown East will travel to Sevier County. Tennessee Eye, the Vikings, home tomorrow night to South Doyle. And Crockett will travel to Knox Halls. Interestingly enough, Region 2 in 5A football, every one of their teams finished 5-5. Five and five. So I guess it was a breakdown of who did what inside the league. But every single team in playoffs in Region 2, which tells me either it's a really tough conference or it's a soft conference because everybody ended up 5-5, five and five, but that's who's playing who tomorrow night in 5A. Again, everybody plays at 7. And then last but not least in 6A football, Dobbins Minute hosting Ottawa. Science Hill travels to Bradley Central. Farragut home to Cleveland. And the Bearden Bulldogs will be in Maryville. And that's the high school football playoffs for tomorrow night as we are here live at Champion Chevrolet. Join with this young lady to my left, and let's get her on camera because it's time to get her on camera. She <laughs> is the lady, and she would be Tiffany Willis, and let's get the camera up, and boom, hit that magic button on big fat finger, <laughs> and there she is. Hello. She is the beauty and the beast. <laughs> now, you know who that is. You know who, you know who I ain't, so uh, we be the beast, she be the beauty. Good morning, young lady. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Uh, Appreciate you very much. Doing fantastic. You like this weather? I do. Love I wish it would weather. stay this way. Hey, I like how she talks. <laughs> 68, 70 is perfect. All the way through. That's <laughs> my kind of winter. And 40s at night and 60s and 70s yes. for, the, uh, for the daytime. I don't think it's going to stay that way, but the extended forecast stays pretty warm all the way through next weekend. I was checking. So 
Anyway, Good. we're here at Champion Chevrolet. Buy a ticket and change a life. This is a really cool thing. Again, kudos to Champion Chevrolet, it's the 11th year at yes. Illinois Vehicles. So tell us all about how for a $50 ticket or tickets, you can come out of here with a brand spanking new vehicle. Tell me about it. Yes, we are. Um, like you said, thank you to Champion. It wouldn't be possible without without them and being our, our raffle sponsor. Um, we are allowed to sell 4,000 tickets, um, pretty good odds, $50 a ticket, um, no limit on how many purchase, and 100% of the proceeds go to Nice Warner Children's Hospital. And um, we do four, four drawings. Grand prize is a choice of one of three vehicles, um, 2017 Cadillac ATS and 2000. Oh, I'm sorry, 2018 Cadillac, 2017 Chevrolet Silverado, mm -hmm. and then 2018 Chevrolet Traverse. And the if you've not seen the new body styles of the Chevrolet Traverse, they are nice. Mm -hmm. They they're a lot different than the 2017. They're mm -hmm. slick slick vehicle. Um, and then we also do a second, third, and fourth drawing for cash, straight cash. So second drawing is 2,500. $2,500. Third drawing is $1,500. And fourth drawing is $1,000 cash prize. Um, the drawing is January 27th. It's a night of our annual Spirit Gala. I believe this is the 28th Spirit Gala. And um, it's a fun evening. It's um, the theme's Roaring Twenties. Um, Club Moxie. It's a prohibition kind of theme. And um, you don't have to be present to win. Um, but if you do want to come to the gala, it's, it's a fun night. It's going to be at the King Building downtown. Dress up like a gangster? You can, yeah. We're actually doing a, flappers. Um, flappers, yeah. And um, I think the men back in the 20s, they, they um, put carnations in their little jacket pocket and the little hats. I don't know what the official name is for the hat, but the suspenders. And But this year, we're actually going to do a um, best outfit cost a tire for the man and woman and giving away some cool gift certificates that night. So I can see you in a flapper dress with a headband and, mm -hmm. and feather uh, and a feather and some uh, necklaces. Yeah. And, yeah. Yep. I'm going dress. all out. Mm -hmm. You're going to dress up as a Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's cool. There you go. Yep. So, it's going to be fun. Yeah, so. It's going to be fun. That's for a great cause. Nice one for Children's Hospital. Here's the cool thing. Again, you see on the screen, we're talking to Tiffany Willis. Coming up, Carmichael's going to join us. we got problems we're going to talk about after we visit with Tiffany. Tennessee football, yet another problem, and it may be the final nail in the coffin for Butch Jones. We've got uh, playing football players that weren't supposed to play because they were uh, in concussion protocol and played them anyway. That's not good. I promise you that is not good. And so we'll talk more about that coming up in a few minutes. But, again, these tickets, which is really neat, 100% stays in the region to benefit Nice Wonger Children's Hospital. And we have folks in the, watching in eight or nine states, so uh, for – those who have no clue, tell us what Nice Wonger Children's Hospital is all about. Yes, it's um, it's the only region's um, children's hospital. The the next closest you would have to take your child is is Knoxville, and if if it's a long stay, that can be very inconvenient, and especially if you have other children. So we're very fortunate to have um, this children's hospital, the only region's children's hospital. It serves 29 counties, and we have um, great specialists. Um, it's a St. Jude affiliate as well. And also, it's been a year, um, I think last week, we are also Shriners affiliate too um, for orthopedic care. And um, so we're very, very fortunate to have this hospital um, to, to stay in this area and not have to travel to Knoxville or Memphis. And um, last year, I'm going to have, next time I come, I'm going to bring somebody from Nice to speak on the clinical side of, um, you know, the need and where the dollars go and um, last year the proceeds from the raffle help purchase um, it's called a NAS unit it's a for neonatal absence syndrome babies um, that are born with um, opiate addiction they have to have a s separate kind of area to be treated for that um, quiet and um, so those dollars were able to um, build this special unit um, away from the other NICU so these babies can um, deal with the withdrawal issues and um, I believe it's a 20 bed unit um, so you know we we make over a hundred thousand dollars off this raffle and it is 
well needed and and it's definitely used for just that's a, just one small example of what was these dollars were used for um the needs are great um there there's always something that they um equipment um that um that they need um blanket warmers specific things syringe pumps that help more accurate give them medicine um, the list is on and on and on of, of what they always need. So the money goes to a great cause, obviously, with these kids. Nice one for Children's Hospital. Uh, for you out-of-towners, out-of-staters, Knoxville's 100 miles away. That's the next closest Children's Hospital. And then Memphis is eight hours away. It's way across the state. Of course, Tennessee goes east to west, more than north-south as far as distance. So uh, Memphis is every bit of eight hours away, but Knoxville's about 100, 110 miles down the road, maybe a little bit further. It's a good, easy been on traffic an hour and a half, two hours. So to have this hospital in this region, uh, it serves a lot of folks geographically. It's a phenomenal place. I say unfortunately, but fortunately, we know folks just in the past year that have had their child in Ice Longer Children's Hospital. And the fortunate they were there, the fortunate they had the kind of service they got because they came out of there just raving about Ice Longer Children's Hospital. It's based here in Johnson City, but it takes care of kids all over the region. So what this is for you is to buy a $50 ticket or tickets. Obviously, the more you buy, the better chance you have because you got more pulls in the pot to uh, win not one, but actually four prizes, as Tiffany alluded to. Three cash prizes, and, of course, from Champion Chevrolet, they throw you the keys and say, this is yours. There's no – it's not a lease program. It's not. It's like, here's the, here's the vehicle. Mm -hmm. A Traverse 2018, and she's right. If you've seen the new body style of the Traverse, Maybe I can get a picture of it. Uh, from maybe Cletus can bring me one. It is beautiful. They've got the new brochures out. 2017 Chevrolet Silverado 1500 double cab pickup truck or a Cadillac 2018 Cadillac ATS. Any of those three is yours if you're the grand prize winner. But again, if they call out Tiffany Willis for 2,500 bucks or Tiffany Willis for 1,500 bucks or Tom Taylor for 1,000 bucks, I ain't gonna turn that down either. <laughs> Buy a ticket and change your life. You don't have to be there. Uh, how can we get a ticket? I mean, they're selling them here at Champion. How else can we get tickets? Yes, um, Champion Chevrolet and any um, Franklin Woods, um, JCMC Hospital and their gift shops also ha has the tickets. Or you can um, call our office. It's 423-302-3131. Or I know a lot of people like to purchase things online. We make it very easy. So you can go to our website. It's mshafoundation.org and we'll mail you your ticket. Or tickets. tickets. Like I said, we're selling four thousand this year. Like we've, we've um, increased that by a thousand. We've um, normally only allowed to sell by the state three thousand. So we've got a um, lofty goal, but I feel confident that we we can try to sell all of them. That's that's a lot of money for the children's hospital. I said a hundred percent. It doesn't pay anybody's salary or any um, anything. Um, overhead or anything like that, 100% goes straight to Nice Longer, which is a great, great thing. Straight to the kids. Yes. That's that's the name of the game. So if you're out of state, in state, down the road, wherever, I know we have a lot of folks watching back up where I'm from in West Virginia. So if you want to buy a ticket, uh, it helps. You know, as she said, the more times you got your name in the pot, the more chance you have to win. Mm -hmm. And uh, you guys have payroll deduction available through Mountain State's intranet. So. In fact, the winner last year was someone from Mountain State. Yes, right? mm -hmm. they were team members. So, yeah, if, you, if you're listening and you're a team member, we, we make that easy as well. Um, payroll deduction, and we actually split it up. So you get $25 out one pay period and then another $25 um, the next pay period. So $50 isn't coming out right at once on your paycheck. But that was that was good to um to see a team member win last year and um, that's actually our number one way of selling tickets is our team members which is good because uh, you know we, we see that support from our system and um, and they see the need as well and the importance of having the children's hospital so. the community can buy into it too and they do so we got 4,000 tickets to sell you and you guys are already selling tickets right oh yeah they, they started selling um first of October and like I said it doesn't matter where you live we we have um people from we've had Hawaii and Washington State, uh, you know, because you're not losing here. You're you're taking um, you're helping kids, and then you have an opportunity to win a car or cash. So either way, you can't lose. Everybody wins. That's right. The kids win. The hospital wins. They get the necessary funds to help the kids. The kids win because they're the recipient of the funds that they're trying to generate. And then on top of that, you win because if you win one of these four prizes. 
You walk out of there with a minimum of a thousand bucks. Could win fifteen hundred or twenty five hundred. And of course, I'm booking for the grand prize. <laughs> I like to roll out of there. I don't know which one would you take. I believe. Um, I, I, I'm with the Traverse. I, I like it. Yep. But I've got two young kids, so, you know, having that third row seat would be nice for me. What about you? I'm an old country boy. I like to have me a pickup truck. Yeah. So. I know. that The trucks are my I, dad just bought one here a year ago, and he, he loves it. It's it's a pretty slick big truck, too, as well. So, but um, I think I'd look good tooling around town in a Cadillac, too. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be a hard decision, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. And you know what? And usually the winner, we, you know, they don't have to decide that night because we call them that night and let them know. And it takes them a couple of days to decide because they are all three really good options. Oh, absolutely. The benefits to all three mm -hmm. for any of us. You have small kids at Traverse Works. I'm a redneck country boy. I like to pick up <laughs> truck. But I also like to look, I think I look cool tooling around town in a champion Cadillac. Too. That's right. So, uh, it's all good. So, again, one more time. It's MSA, mshafoundation.org. You can stop by your champion on the Bristol Highway Motor Mile and buy tickets. Or you can uh, give them a call. At 302-423, of course, here our area code, 423-302-3131. That's another way to do it. So all kinds of options are making it very convenient for you to buy tickets. And, again, the more you purchase, the better chance you have to win. Uh, somebody walked in and bought, I don't know, 100 tickets or whatever. That really would increase your oh, chances. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, somebody please do that. <laughs> yes. Please do that. Yes. We're giving the folks to come in and buy, buy them in, in batches of, I don't know, 5, 10, 5, 10, 15, 20 tickets mm -hmm. at a pop, that'd be good. Right? Well, until you can, you know, a lot of times they'll split it up, you know, because it is, we, we're allowed to sell, start selling 120 days out. So, you know, this, the strong is until January 27th. So, you know, buy one this month, buy one next month, and, you know, kind of split it up um, to help you out that way. And so they put them in a big bin, or I'm not thinking the gala, they put them yeah. in a big bucket or bin. Well, we put them in a big rolling, big yep, mm -hmm. pull out, yeah. Pull out the winners. Yes, Haley Haley Dietrich um, is our um, raffle prize draw puller. prize puller. Yes. <laughs> Haley Dietrich. She's and good. yep. That'd be Andy's better half. So that's right. That's cool stuff. So you'll be back in two weeks. I will. Yeah. Yep. Well, and I'll and I will bring uh, somebody from Nice Longer to share with them, the audience more of a clinical perspective and you know the needs. That's it's like I said earlier. It's there's always something. You know, it's only six years old hospital but um as we all know technology changes um different things like that that um arise and you know there's just oh, the yeah. list is long definitely of what we give back and what they purchase every year the need is there and it's growing all the time no question taters thank see you, you see you in two weeks yes thank you tom she's a sweetheart we'll take a break <laughs> we're right back we're live at champion chevrolet on show number 628 of the tom toes for joe American Import and Auto Repair in Johnson City takes care of both male and female customers, but owner Kim Smith says they have a special care and concern for ladies. Being a female in what's considered a man's business, I understand the trepidation that women may have when they come to the shop. They feel like they don't know about cars, they might be intimidated, but that's not the way we do business. Everybody's treated the same. We take the time to explain anything that they have questions about, the repair, the process, the part. We want to make sure people are comfortable with what we're going to do to their vehicle and that they understand. We do cater to women in a sense. We have a real nice waiting room with nice Keurig coffee and flavored creamers, air-conditioned cushion seats, TV, everything a girl could want while she waits for her car to be fixed. American Import and Auto Repair in Johnson City opens six days a week. Call today at 913-3111. Do you need an event catered? At Fields Dream Pit, we cater for gatherings over 50 people. Weddings, anniversaries, birthdays, company picnics, sporting banquets, to name a few. We can set up, clean up, and of course serve. We also offer value packs that include all the food. You pick that up and serve it yourself. Check out our webpage at fieldsdreampit.com. That's fieldsdreampit.com. Fields Dream Pit, Eastern Star Exit on I-26, open Tuesday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. And we're a phone call away at 423-349-349. Six four three seven three four nine six four three seven. Phil's Dream Pit, the quest for perfect barbecue. If you're catching some waves or just playing in the yard, it is important to protect yourself. You may not feel the sun's heat, but UV rays can still damage your skin even in cloudy weather. Blue Lizard Sunscreen, recommended by pharmacists and dermatologists nationwide. 
Our SPF 30 plus formulations use only the highest quality ingredients for broad spectrum protection. As a reminder to protect yourself, our bottle turns blue when UV light is present. Blue Lizard, we've got you covered. From the driveways where your kids play basketball and ride their bicycles, to the parking lots at your local church or grocery store, Bracken Paving is an important part of many neighborhoods in our area. No matter how large or how small the job, Bracken strives for excellence in every service they provide. It's a foundation for a strong community. Discover the difference at Bracken Paving and Asphalt Maintenance. Give us a call or visit us online at brackenpaving.com. At American Import Auto Repair in Johnson City, one of the things that owner Tim Smith is most proud of is their hard-earned certifications. We are an ASC Blue Seal shop, which is important because what it tells the customer is we care enough to get certified, not in one certain area of cars. You have to be certified in eight different certifications, in eight different tests you have to take, and you have to be updated on them yearly to, to make sure that you're uh, up to date. We not only have one of those, we have three ASE Master Technicians here. With the ratio, it goes into a ratio, and it, we're a blue seal shop. So uh, it tells you that we, we care about training and we care about knowing about your car. We want to help fix it right. American Import and Auto Repair, West Market Street, Johnson City, home of the free loaner car program. Open six days a week. Call today, 913-3111. Hi, I'm Rob Cole with Bays Mountain Park. There's something for everyone at Bays Mountain Park. Whether you're an outdoor enthusiast or simply looking to get away and relax, Bays Mountain Park in Kingsport, Tennessee is the perfect destination. For only $4 per vehicle, enjoy 3,500 acres of breathtaking scenery, featuring 40 miles of hiking trails, wildlife habitat, one of the southeast premier planetariums, and much, much more. For more information, please visit www.baysmountain.com or call us at 423 229 9447 Bays Mountain Park one of the Tri-Cities best places for learning leisure and recreation if you're catching some waves or just playing in the yard it is important to protect yourself you may not feel the sun's heat but UV rays can still damage your skin even in cloudy weather Blue Lizard Sunscreen recommended by pharmacists and dermatologists nationwide our SPF 30 plus formulations use only the highest quality ingredients for broad spectrum protection. As a reminder to protect yourself, our bottle turns blue when UV light is present. Blue Lizard, we've got you covered. Your life is always changing. You never know what shape it will take or how your financial needs might change. But if we talk about your investments and how they can provide for you and your family, the future becomes clear. At Wells Fargo Advisors, we believe conversation leads to financial clarity. Let's start a conversation today. Back live again with the Tom Douglas Sports Show. Here we are. We are show number 628. We go from Tiffany Willis and Karen Hubs to my man Carmichael's in the house. Good afternoon, sir. How are you? Good afternoon, sir. You had Miss Hubs on. Miss Hubs early. on. Yes, the scores, right? Yeah, my friend Karen does a great job with her uh, event planning. With her event planning. Oh, she's awesome. And so yeah. here is the official hot off the press. We showed it earlier. Here's hot off the press. The 
I'll see if I get, yep, the 2017 Turkey Trot T-shirt. I got. She brought me one, and I thank her very much. That's pretty cool. And I'm a parking rig employee, and can't even get one. Unless <laughs> <laughs> I want to come down to John City on Thanksgiving. No, thank you. I mean, that's a nice weekend. To come to I've got some get connections me. with us. Uh, yeah. There you go. We're live again talking to Carmichael. Good grief. Let's jump. we got a lot to talk about. we got some NASCAR. got Butch Jones and the... Uh, ever evolving problem. That is a so, that is a that is a soap opera worthy of Harper Man. Valley PTA. You want to start with that one? You want Dallas? Oh, why? Yeah, that's because I've been on that one just about all morning. Just, I mean, you know, I think it's a couple of there's some moving pieces in this thing. Mm-hmm. Number one is you got the Haslam's down there. They can't, and they're a gr- fine. I mean, they have done a lot of fine things for the commu- Knoxville community. But number one, they can't run a college athletic program to save their lives number two they can't run an nfl team to save their lives <laughs> and and then I, I think that's one thing i think the other thing is i mean he's gone it's just a matter it's not i think a matter of if it's a matter of when oh i think it's i mean but I, even though i heard the other day was if he won out that you know they would bring him back but it's like that fan base would just torture if they did, I don't. I mean, I think it's. I think right now the big thing is what they're trying to do. From what I'm hearing, uh, his agent Jimmy Sexton, they're trying to find Butch a landing place, a new, they're, job. A new job somewhere. I mean, you're. I, I can two right off the top of my head: New Mexico State, Oregon State. But they're trying to find and, and lessen the load on Tennessee. What they're having to pay out was if you can get Butch a new gig, you know, then Tennessee doesn't have to pay. They're and negotiating the settlement. It's like anything else. You know, usually when two people get mad, they're just trying to work out the settlement agreement. Well, that's well, what's happening. But to me, it's not selfish because you're holding up the Tennessee football program to wait to see if we can find Butch Jones a new job. Well, right? it's it's not because of the it's not because right now they're doing background work on coaches that they're interested in. They can't go talk to say Dan Mullen and sit right. down with him. It's middle of the season, right. but they can start doing their due diligence. They can start going in and doing. Uh, background, you know, check, hey, is this guy the guy we want at our place? And start talking to agents. I'm sure that, you know, they're either who the Haslam's. I think Curry is just, a, I wouldn't say a puppet man, but maybe that's as close to it down there. And it depends on who they've who they've had. Now, I understand that uh, Jimmy, not Big Jim, Big Jim's the older guy, older man that runs Haslam family, but Jimmy, the one that runs the Browns, or Boy. yeah. Yeah. yeah, not the governor. The governor is keeping his, which is smart. He's keeping his nose out of it. Uh-huh. But Jimmy evidently yesterday met with Phil Fulmer. And I'm sure this was to talk about. Fulmer probably yeah. will be. An interim. No, not a, as an interim, but being somebody who will head up the like the search, possibly Peyton. If Peyton, you know, maybe Peyton's involved in this one way or another. Either Peyton may be involved in the search at Tennessee or maybe Peyton going to work for the Browns. Because evidently Jimmy is an analytics guy. He's doing, the, but the football people there did not want, or they didn't want McCarron. They, I mean, this was that's a lot. The AJ McCarron, if a lot of people don't know, the Browns and Bengals agreed on a trade for AJ McCarron from the Bing Cincinnati at three fifty-five. You have to call the like you do in the draft. You got to call in the NFL office. Well, evidently they waited. Cincinnati called it in. Well, now Cleveland has to call in to say, yes, we agreed on this trade. Well, they missed the deadline. Mm. And so McCarron didn't go <laughs> McCarron didn't go to the, Bengals. Bang, to the, Browns. the Browns. So this is a, tr- b- a big egg on the face. But going back to Tennessee, I think it's just that they're trying to this, you know, they're trying to get Butch work it out, get him out of there and trying to make it as less messy as possible, but it's already messy. We're talking to Carmichael, the Read Optional. This is a, uh, a magazine or a periodical or a p- publication, is the way to say it. Claimed the Vols coaching staff knowingly played offensive lineman Brett Kendrick last week for at least two quarters while dealing with a concussion during last Saturday's loss to Kentucky. Also states that Kendrick is in concussion protocol. He will not play Saturday. They're not saying why, but obviously this has got something to do with it. Jones spoke with the media yesterday saying he cared about player safety while distancing himself from the decision to remove injured players from the field, though he didn't mention Kendrick by name. It's not really his job. That's the medical folks. But Carmichael, he's the head. I mean, again, his name's on the 
his name's on the top of the totem pole. Right, and and not in his, well, I guess in his defense, not in his defense, you know, he's there trying to manage game. That you've got medical people there, that that's their job. Yep. And when they find out that a player can't play, it's like, you, Tom, you're the head coach. Hey, Tom, this guy can't go. Right. Now, did they do that? Who knows? If they did that and he played the kid anyway, then you know what? That's like the guy. That's like the clown. At, that's like the <laughs> shark man down at, down at Gainesville. You kick him on out. You say, here's what. Because McElwain didn't make twelve million, he didn't get his whole buyout walking out the door. At Gainesville, he they negotiated with him yeah. because of the death threat stuff, yeah. and that's what um, that's what happens in this case. You know, if Butch did know and played him, then you know what? It's you're trying then to say you're getting out of a lot of that buyout, which is what we were talking about with the buyout. Um, trying to find him a place to go, looking for. Jimmy Sexton's his agent, and I read this several weeks ago. That was the big – one of the holdups was they were trying to find Butch another play, another gig to go to from here, maybe the lesson load on Tennessee, having to pay him out. We're, talking, we're talking to Carmichael, so you see, but see, I'm back to Butch Jones again, and you're saying it's okay, but so what you're telling me, you got a uh, – he guy's almost like being a headhunter. He's out there trying to find this guy a job, so when we find him a job, we're going to cut him a check and send him on down the road we're going to pull in an interim coach in the meantime the program keeps spiraling downward the recruits are decommitting uh you've got signing date the first signing day coming up in december uh that you can go out and get guys and the other thing i keep talking about is if you keep dragging your feet on this these marquee name coaches are going to get scooped up and tennessee has the potential of missing out again well here's the thing on that like if they're talk, they want to talk to Dan Mullen. Right. They're not going to be able to sit right now at this time of the year. They're not going to be able to sit down with Dan Mullen and right. talk to him. They're going to talk to whoever Dan, which his agent may be Jimmy Sexton. I don't know. Jimmy Sexton seems to be the agent of most of the coaches, mm-hmm. which and I think he's a Tennessee. I think he's a Tennessee graduate. So they're you know they're doing their background check on their coaches that they're interested in. They're seeing you're put. They're putting feelers. They're doing the work on this. It's just not out in the open for them. They're not getting on the Right. The university plane flying to Starkville or flying to wherever to talk to that coach. They're talking to his people under the radar. Under the radar because they can't do it because they don't want to screw it up. They don't want to it get out all over the world and and commit start decommit and maybe they're not interested in say a Justin Fuente and Virginia it gets out well he's talking to Tennessee well then that's having to put he's having to put out a fire at Blacksburg. So if you're John Curry. Yeah, we're talking to Carmichael. We're going to get in the World Series and some NASCAR coming up too. But if you're and also preseason college basketball, the Duke he's named preseason number one of the country. We'll get his take on that. If you're John Curry, we've we've had this discussion several times, but here we go again. If you're Curry, you got the Haslam money and all the boosters behind you at UT, and they say, okay, we've had Kiffin bust, we've had Dooley bust, we've had Jones a bust. We're going to spend the money, take the time. Get the guys out there. We want the absolute best guy out there. Give me your top, maybe not the best, give me your top three that you think would fit into what they need at Tennessee right now. I mean, I don't know if the, these three guys would come, but here's the three I would go after, and they, they would tell me no. Scott Frost at Central Florida. I got you. I'm there. James Franklin at Penn State. He would be perfect at Tennessee. Okay. And Dan Mullen at Mississippi State. Justin Fuente, Virginia Tech. He's a possibility, but I don't know that he would be interested in leaving Virginia Tech just as, like almost as soon as he got there. Les Miles. No. Chip no. Kelly. No. Def- and, and Chip Kelly's not a good fit for this part of the country. Chip Kelly, I think, will land somewhere. But Chip Kelly's one of these kind of coaches where it's foot- he's consumed with football. He doesn't want to have to do- deal with the media. He doesn't want to have to deal with being under the spotlight. Chip Kelly's going to go back west. Look at you, possibly UCLA. Interesting place, and this is something I've thought about. If Willie, if Scott Frost didn't go to Florida, if he doesn't go to Florida, mm-hmm. Florida then would be very interested in Willie Taggart at Oregon. Hmm. Willie Taggart has signed as many top 25 prospects at Oregon from the state of Florida than Jim McElhaney signed, and he's the Florida head coach. So Willie Taggart would be a potential, and if Willie Taggart went back to Florida, went to Florida, then I could see Chip Kelly ended up back at Oregon. But he'll end up on the West Coast if 
Uh, you know, if if Todd Graham leaves Arizona State, that's a possibility. If uh, Jim Morris bounced at UCLA, that's a possibility for Chip as well. He's a West, uh, he's a West Coast guy. We're talking again to Carmichael. We're live here at Champion Chevrolet inside the uh, studio, inside the showroom here at Champion. Cleet is going to come up and join us here in a little while. Uh, Andy's out on assignment for this afternoon, and so we'll be back tonight again for the Champion Five Star Football Preview Show. New start time. The showroom closes for the winter months at seven o'clock, so the show's been moved up from five to seven starting this week till we wrap the thing up. Uh, I think it's going to be later on this month. We're going to. Well, that's up to these guys how long they want us to roll, but uh, we're going to be here as long as they want us to be here for the uh, for the show for the season. Hello to Don Rains. Appreciate you, my friend, and Kathy Sparks and Aaron Van Dyke. Uh, and Renee McNeil, some of the folks watching the show. Thank you, ladies and gents, for for watching the show. If Gruden's not coming, and I, I, and I don't know Gruden. why. I would and and, and it's, this is another thing. But he needs to. If he's not coming, he's got everybody worked up. And I've read on Facebook he's going to sign for you know eighty-seven thousand million dollars. And got all this stuff set in place, ready to go. Uh, you know, if he's not coming, then come out and say he's not. I mean, it's he's, like he's John he's Gruden. John Gruden's like the like, and we all dealt n- new one. John Green's like the pretty girl in high school that loved to be courted by everybody, but she wasn't going to go to the dance with you if you if you had ten million dollars. She he's that way. Number one, why would you want to hire John Gruden? He got fired in Oakland. He didn't win the big game in Oakland. He went to Tampa and won the Super Bowl, but he won it with Tony Dungy's players. He didn't last long after he won that Super Bowl. He's not coached in ten years. That's what I've asked the guys earlier this week. Why? I said, Can he coach? He's never. His he, track record's not that good. His track record's not that good. He's no. never coached in college. He's never recruited. You can say what you want to. Love, hate, uh, Nick Saban. Nick Saban. It's the thrill of him going out recruiting at 66 years old, getting those high school five-star players and going after him. John Gruden wouldn't do that. You got to hire somebody at Tennessee, number one, that wants to be there. You got to hire somebody that is not afraid to stand up to Nick Saban and will just go toe to toe with him on a person and on a, you know, Kiffin. Say what you want, love, hate Lane Kiffin. Kiffin would get back with, and so would somebody like James Franklin, would go back with, at somebody like Saban. And you got to hire somebody that can recruit the United States. When Phil Former was successful at Tennessee, when Johnny Majors was successful at Tennessee, they recruited not only, you can't, because you can't win at just recruiting Tennessee kids. You get a few, you got to get the best. You can't let teams from around here, but you got to be able to go to Atlanta and get some players. You got to be able to go down to Florida and get some players. California. You get California. You got to be able to go to New Jersey. Tennessee had players, you know, they recruited well in New Jersey. You got to be able to go into the Tidewater area in Virginia, Washington D.C. You got to be able to go in Texas and get some players. You've got to recruit on a national basis. Butch Jones, Derek Dooley, they couldn't do that. Kiffin did. Kiffin would have been had he not went back to Southern Cal. Kiffin would have recruit had kept that recruiting up. A lot of people don't realize when the year that that Fulmer was fired, and it was probably time. I mean, it seems like the game had kind of passed him by. But in that year, Fulmer had commitments from both Taj Boyd, who was a star quarterback at Clemson for years, and Bryce Petty, who's now playing with the New York Jets, who was a star quarterback at Baylor. He had two top quarterbacks committed to Tennessee. They've not had anybody like that committed to the program since since Phil left. Talking to Carmichael again, talking Tennessee football, and again, that's where we are. So it continues to spiral downward with this latest uh, situation involving concussion protocol. Brett Kendrick will not play Saturday against Southern Miss. His uh, injury has been undisclosed. They won't, for confidentiality's sake, they will not release that, although everybody knows that he left the game with concussion-like symptoms. He's now in concussion protocol, which means he will not play until cleared by the medical folks. That's the thing. I, you know, the AD can say what they want. Coaches can say what they want. But the last name that signs off on these kids to come back and play football is the medical folks. So Kendrick is out for this week, and so we'll keep keep an eye on what's going on down at Gate Town. Let's switch gears while we got a chance with you and talk about, ooh, they let one get away last night. One for 13 men in scoring position, left 10 on base. Hugh Darvish laid an egg. Dodgers get beat. Congratulations, Astros. Yes, and that was the team. First year had the Astros and the Cubs in the World Series. I got at least half of it right. There you go. And the, uh, I mean, they're both young ball clubs. Uh, Houston, that picture, I remember that Sports Illustrated when the 2014, in 2014, they picked Houston to win the 2017 World Series. Kind of like uh, Back to the Future predicted in 2000, 
15 or 16, the Cubs winning the movie Back to the Future, picking the Cubs to win the World Series and that time. But Houston, they proved you can go into the tank even though you really don't want to. They proved you can go into the tank, lose 100 games four straight years, Mm -hmm. build your team back up through the draft, and a few free agent signings here and there or some trades. I mean, Houston has traded off some more excellent young pieces just to get some veteran players like Justin Verlander. Uh, they went last year for Carlos Gomez. They traded off some players. and But they've still got some young, some young players, still a few more young players on the farm club. Los Angeles, very good young team position-wise. Where I have my issue with the Dodgers is starting pitching. And I that's why my two early World Series for next year is Washington and Washington and Houston. Washington's got the pitch. Washington's going to make one last run because Bryce Harper's a free agent after the 2018 season. If by June, July, if by early June, if the Nats would happen to be out of it, they'll make a trade. They'll trade Harper to somebody because they know they're not going to be able to re-sign him after 2018. They're all they're pushing their chips to the middle of the table next year, and with the pitching staff they got with Scherzer, Strasburg. And uh, Gio Gonzalez, they're going to make a to try to make a run, and I think they've got the best starting pitching in the National League. You look at Darvish, you look at two scenarios. Justin Verlander came over from Detroit; he was a hit. Obviously, he got it done for the Astros. You Darvish comes over from the Rangers. Game three, first time in Darvish's big league career that he failed to complete at least three innings and strike out at least one batter. The second time he did it, only twice he's ever done it. The second time was last night, Game Seven. This guy goes three and a third, nine hits, nine runs, eight of those earned, walked two, struck out none. He just laid an egg on the worst night you could do it, game seven of the World Series. Kershaw in the bullpen. I mean, Kershaw came out of the bullpen, tried to stop the bleeding, but the damage was done. And George Springer is the MVP. And the Astros go back to Houston with the crown. And, and the Dodgers got to scratch their head and go, what if they're one for 13 with – men in scoring position, they left 10 men on base. Yeah, they couldn't. They were there trying to swing from the heels instead of just trying to piece run. They were trying to play the American League game, sit there, hit the home runs. Instead, When they were still in the ball game last night early, when McCullers had trouble, I mean, he hit four guys in two in like two in the innings. Or two almost third. Two in the third. He hit four guys, and it was not because he was trying to hit it. I mean, he's just, he was wild. And they couldn't do any, they could only get, they couldn't get any runs. They didn't get the run until later in the game. They couldn't scratch any runs together. I mean, they didn't play any kind of little ball. They sat there and tried to play big big ball, American League ball, home run, get two on base and try to jack one out instead of trying to manufacture runs. And by the time they, you know, they couldn't, they, it was 5 nothing. it was over. McCullers, this is what, I mean, the Dodgers had the opportunities. Listen to this. First inning, leadoff double, later had bases loaded, two outs, nothing. Second inning, leadoff single, later had runners on first and second, one out, nothing. Third inning, runners on first and second, nobody out, nothing. Fifth inning, runners on first and second, one out, nothing. So there's four innings against McCullers. They had a chance. I mean, they, they got to him. They reached him, but couldn't make it happen. And so, uh, again, as we said, they leave 10 on base. They were one for 13 men in scoring position to try and advance them. So that pretty much, for me, kind of sums up. Uh, yeah, the, sums game up the, over. Game. the yeah. game was over. The game was over in 30. I mean, you could. You could have turned over and watched the hockey game, which I did. But you could have turned over and watched, turned over and watched anything after the, about the thirteen, because really, the Astros were done. They got the five runs they needed. All they were doing was they were playing for outs. They were on de- on defense, and the Dodgers just couldn't do anything, get anything going to try to manufacture any runs. Cody Bellinger, World Series record, struck out seventeen times in seven games. Guy went four for twenty-eight, batting one forty-three. For the Dodgers, obviously a long off season for him to kind of sit back and reflect. And somewhere uh, in heaven, Gil Hodges is Gil Hodges is is smiling today because back in the fifties, Gil Hodges went through a. And Hamlin's like, you know, he was his initial facial expression was what? I mean, it's like, why are you mad? Because this is racing. But the other guy that should, probably should be madder than Elliot is Brad Kozlowski. This guy was always what went win at what do you call him, Cheesehead Factory Boy? Yeah, his buddy, his partner, his his tag his tag team <laughs> partner there, the cheese Cheesecake Factory Boy, Joey Logano, who got hit, who his one win of the year that would have got him in the chase was at Martinsville that got vacated. Yeah. Cheater. So he has a tire go down and, you know, spins out, causes Kozlowski uh, to not be able to win the race. 
and he was clearly on his way to win the race. And so he's come out and apologized. His crew chief said, well, I blew it. Should have got him off the track, and I didn't. You, so. you could see the smoke, and it's like, why don't you get off the track before yeah. we set up another caution <laughs> here and have to start? And he doesn't. And it's, oh, goodness. Jimmy Johnson. Racing Texas Motor Speedway, going after his record seventh Texas win and a championship berth. Of course, Kyle Busch is in. So we got uh, seven drivers squeezing into three spots between now and Phoenix, trying to get to Martins or rather get to Homestead for the final weekend to try and win the championship. So Jimmy Johnson, again, is a superman at Texas Motor Speedway. All-time track record with wins, seven. Top fives, 15. And top tens, 21. So... This guy's the deal. He's the one you got to keep an eye out. Also, Kevin Harvick, kind of strong. But here's your top eight going like in in order. Kyle Busch, Martin Truex Jr., Brad Keselowski, Kevin Harvick, the top four. Then comes Jimmy Johnson, Ryan Blaney, Denny Hamlin, Chase Elliott. And the heat's on this weekend at the Super Speedway, Texas Motor Speedway, for the uh, AAA Texas 500. And so uh, it's anybody's race out there. I think Truex is in unless he just completely bombs bombs in the last two races he's got the points he should be in i think then you're have those other six guys are having a race for those two spots and jimmy johnson i think the pressure's on him he's but he's got two good tracks coming up that he's going to this one in phoenix so usually kevin harvick's also very good at phoenix so those two guys may have have the inside tracks on getting those last two positions we're talking again to our buddy carmichael i want him to come up in a few minutes they went to the Whatever they went to last week or so in, in Middle Tennessee and Nashville won a bunch of tournaments for next year. I want him to talk about that coming up here in a minute. So he won't be with us tonight. He's got a previous engagement. So let's get him to kind of hit the highlights because we, we got Dave Angie coming up here in just a few minutes. But I want Carmichael to talk a little college basketball in a second. But let's run down some of the bigger games. And there are some good ones coming up again on Saturday in, in college football. For my money, Virginia Tech and Miami huge game of the ACC in Miami Hurricanes or Hokies probably because they're home the the Hurricanes but it will be a very good game Virginia Tech's got a good team Miami has just been like squeezed by every week but just like the hair of their chin 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 but I think because they're home uh, they're they're they'll able to get enough points able to to slow Virginia Tech down and win this game Clemson and North Carolina State uh, Clemson it will be close and it you know last year North Carolina State had had the ball on the three on the two yard line with a field goal to win the game in regulation and missed it and then went to overtime and Clemson beat them. North Carolina State's got a really good front seven. Uh, Chubb, the kid, Nick Chubb's cousin that plays on their front seven, top ten prospect in the draft. But Notre Dame showed that you could run the ball. Adams had a big game run the ball for Notre Dame last week, and I think Clemson's just got too much offense for NC State, and they beat them at Raleigh tomorrow or Saturday. In Morgantown on Saturday, West Virginia taking on Iowa State. That should be a good one. Should be a good one. Uh, West Virginia came back. They were getting hammered last week. I think, though, they got some points in garbage time, make it a little bit closer than what it was. Uh, Iowa State has upset two top five teams the first time in the school's history. They've done that. But going on the road, I don't think they've got an answer for West Virginia's offense. Yep. For Dana Halverson and the folks in Morgantown, Let's see if they get a W. And, if, and if he doesn't win this game, that may, you know, turn the heat up a little bit. Rumlin's up there a little bit. Yep. Oklahoma at Oklahoma State. Bedlam in this. They call <laughs> they call it Bedlam in Oklahoma. You know, though, with all the talk about Mike Gundy, he's two and ten in these Bedlam games. Now he was going up against Bob Stoops. Oklahoma's the Big 12's last chance. I think if Oklahoma does it. Get to the doesn't make it to the final win the uh, Big 12 championship that there will not be a Big 12 team in the Final Four in the college football championship. They're the best chance. Oklahoma State's not going to make it. TCU's not going to make it. Neither is Iowa State. And I kind of like Oklahoma State this week to beat him to win that uh, Baker or to slow down Baker Mayfield. Mason Rudolph having a great year had a uh, fantastic game last week against West Virginia. Penn State and Michigan State. Can Penn State bounce back? Barkley had had the big kickoff return at the beginning of the game, but Ohio State pretty much shut him down, 22 carries, I think 44, 45 yards. Um, I like Michigan State. I like Sparty at home. Bounce back after losing that game, tough game last week to Northwestern. Two coaches are probably looking for jobs at the end of the year. Auburn at Texas A&M. Well, definitely one coach looking for a job, and that's Kevin Sumlin. Mm-hmm. Uh, the math professor, if he can win out <laughs> – 
and it, especially he's you know Auburn really has their they have their destiny in their hands if they went out they win the SEC they will win the SEC West because they will have beaten Alabama head to head they've got one conference loss uh, they will beat Alabama head to head they will beat in Georgia they get into the finals I think they beat Texas A&M this week is there any SEC coach that would fit in we're thinking the the math the math professor Brett Belima Kevin he's Sullivan, gone any of he's those gone guys, any of those guys would fit in at Tennessee five years ago seven years ago Kevin Sumlin would have I mean when they hired when they hired uh, Des as a chauffeur driver down in Dallas, uh, Dooley. That's, and that's basically what Derek Dooley's doing in Dallas. He's making sure Des gets to practice and the game's all right. That Kevin Sumlin was one they were after, but he's going to be damaged goods, I think, after this. Gus, you know, maybe if Gus, if Gus wanted to come, Gus maybe would fit there. I just think the best fit out of the SEC, if there was a coach coming to Tennessee other than Nick, would be uh, would be Dan Mullen, but Mark Rick, you think he'd leave Miami to come back up to the SEC? Nope, nope, okay. nope. He's happy. He's happy down there. He doesn't want to get in this crazy fan base. Stanford or Washington? Who you like in that ball game? Stanford barely won last week. They uh, their running back was out uh, was out last week, and they they had to hang on to, to win against Oregon State. I like Washington to bounce back. Preseason. Let's see. If I hit all the big games, Arizona Southern Cal's had a big game. Who? Arizona had something. Arizona, uh, watch the quarterback from Arizona. I, and his name, Khalil, I, and then the last name has escaped me right now. Taylor. He is, he is a, I mean, that's probably the reason Rich Rod survives this year at Arizona. He has finally found his, he has finally found his, uh, if you remember, I th- not Major Harris, got a, that's the kid that played quarterback for him at West Virginia back several years ago when West Virginia made the run, had a great year. Uh, he's finally found a quarterback like that. They call him Michael Vick-like or Michael Vick-lite in Arizona. And it's a shame that their games are on like 11 o'clock. He's just amazing to watch. I mean, it's like a video game watching watching football. And that could be an interesting game, and that could be a trap game to beat Southern Cal. What about Wake Forest and Notre Dame? Is that a good one? Notre Dame, Wake Forest hangs in probably for a half, and then Notre Dame is just they've, Notre Dame's just got too many athletes for Wake Forest. I'm looking. Clawson has done – Clawson's done a, gr- a good job over at Wake Forest uh, coaching. Dave Clawson that was at Tennessee for a year as an offensive coordinator in Phil's last year. But uh, Brandon Dawkins? You're talking about Arizona? Arizona, yeah. I've got the quarterback's Brandon Dawkins. Does that sound right? No, that's not. It's. I think it's Khalil. I think he's uh, – uh, Oh, there it is, Khalil Tate. Yes, 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 yes. Six Khalil two, Tate. 2 12 sophomore. Yes, he is – he has become he is becoming a dark horse. He is becoming a guy ch- uh, charging on the inside rail for the Heisman Trophy. Rich if Rodriguez. You, if you can just get him in, you just get him on TV. Some. Says looking his overall. I mean Barrett right. probably bounced. Barrett probably got himself into the Heisman talk last week after the performance he had against Penn State. But yeah, Khalil is the he is the real deal in Arizona. Last thing, college basketball preseason, the Dukey Blue Devils at number one. What do you think about that? No, uh, that's uh, they're all they're always. It's either going to be Duke, Kentucky. It's it's always the same suspects in the top thing, in the top five or ten. It'll be interesting. Duke uh, returns a lot of players, also signs. They've they've Duke has, you know, Duke doesn't have the reputation that Kentucky has, but Duke is becoming a one and a one and done place. Duke. Michigan State, Arizona, Kansas, Kentucky, the top five. Then you have Villanova, Wichita State, Florida, North Carolina, Southern Cal. The pro- the thing is going to be this. When all this stuff hits with the recruiting, with the FBI investigation, does it hit in the middle of the year and really dis- and really tear up college basketball? I've got a feeling it might this year. This might be a dark year in college. It's already starting to be a dark year. Yeah. With the, I mean, all those schools you mentioned – I would say there was at least seven of them that are involved in that FBI. I know Arizona. I know Southern Cal. They're all, in one way or another, involved in this FBI investigation. And if it hits here in the next, you know, you're going to start seeing plea deals and stuff. If it hits here in the next few weeks, college basketball could, I mean, it may be a very dark year for the sport. Blue Dance of the night, by the way, at Freedom Hall. It's everybody gets in free again at 7 o'clock. 
free to the public, both programs, guys and girls, the Bucks and Lady Bucks. I'm still going to call them Lady Bucks. Three-point shooting challenges, dunk exhibitions, intra-squad workouts. You get a chance to hear from Forbes, excuse me, Forbes and Brittany Zell about their expectations of the season. There's contests, cash prizes, everything's free at 7 and, o'clock tonight at Freedom Hall. And the Vols have Carson <laughs> Newman in the exhibition game tonight as well. And that, you know, I want to say now I was wrong about Rick Barnes. I really thought he would come to Tennessee. And I've talked to some people they said even at Texas his last year or two, he kind of got complacent. You know, that was didn't recruit as well. And if he doesn't get a good signing class coming up here in the next week or so, he's not he's not signed a top 100 player in the United States since he's been in Tennessee. They're picked 13th in a 14-team conference. Uh, I think the – Curry's got another problem. Uh, he's going to have another problem on his hands because, well, you know, they had the guy down there in Quanzo. There's no doubt. California's got a chance to be a top, a Sweet 16 or a Final 8 team this year, and he hired the guy that he hired. He, they run Quanzo off, then they hired Tyndall. Donnie Tyndall, I wouldn't let. Remember the show He Haul. <laughs> remember the show He Haul. Yeah. Remember Junior. Yeah. Junior yeah. Samples had BR five four nine. Has a little car lot out there. Yeah. I wouldn't let Ta- Donnie Tyndall run that car lot. That I can't bad. believe he's working for. Well, he was Typhoid Mary everywhere he had been. Morehead. And Southern Miss, he got him in trouble. Yep. I mean, he, you know, he and he, and I can't. And he's working for the Raptors, and I'm like, in the NBA now is like a consultant or something. I'm like, gee, Manise, why would you even let the guy anywhere near your program? But Rick Barnes is just not. I mean, Tennessee basketball ought to be better. That's another program that ought to be better. They've had with uh, Quanzo, with Pearl, with you know the coaches they've had down there over the years. They've had some excellent basketball. We're talking to our buddy Carmichael. Tournaments coming to Johnson City. Pretty cool stuff. Tell me about it. Yes. Uh, got the ASA USA National Tournament coming 10 and under. Eastern National Tournament coming to Johnson City next year. It was a tournament. Uh, we've held the tournament here probably four or five times in the past. Um, we When it was a complete national, east and west, but because of calls, travel costs and everything with these – youth softball programs they've divided the country up into the east and the west the west coast it was getting difficult for california teams to come out from from california to john city even though we did in the past we even had some hawaii teams here in the past but uh so they've divided up john city got the 10 and under eastern national for next year they also class c started class c division in asa usa softball which was needed because you've got so many teams that are just girl softball teams there. They're not that elite level A team. They're not really a B team. They're more kind of recreational type teams. They got the territorial 8, 10, and 12 and under, which I think will be a big hit coming in July because we've got a lot of 8, 10, and 12-year-old C teams that play in our region, not only East Tennessee but Western North Carolina. The, and the tournament director for that tournament, she is one of the ones who run our tournaments up here on the weekends. She does a fantastic job doing them, and I think she'll do a fantastic – Tina Taylor, and I think Tina will do a fantastic – Great name. Great name. Well, she's now – I guess Tina Taylor Gale is her, now her Mary. But she does a fantastic job running um, – from Kingsport, running the youth program in District 1 ASA. There you go, my man Carmichael. Man, we got a lot covered. Yes, sir. College football, NASCAR – little college hoops uh world series world series got it all covered so see you next week see you next week sir yes break will be right back we're live here at champion chevrolet dave onji joins us next on the tom taylor sports show at fca we're touching millions one heart at a time since 1954 the fellowship of christian athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for jesus christ as the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, lives are changed one heart at a time. Learn more at fca.org. American Import and Auto Repair in Johnson City takes care of both male and female customers, but owner Kim Smith says they have a special care and concern for ladies. 
Being a female in what's considered a man's business, I understand the trepidation that women may have when they come to the shop. They feel like they don't know about cars, they might be intimidated, but that's not the way we do business. Everybody's treated the same. We take the time to explain anything that they have questions about, the repair, the process, the part. We want to make sure people are comfortable with what we're going to do to their vehicle and that they understand. We do cater to women in a sense. We have a real nice waiting room with nice Keurig coffee and flavored creamers, air conditioned, cushioned seats, TV, everything a girl could want while she waits for her car to be fixed. American Import Auto Repair in Johnson City open six days a week. Call today at 913-3111. It's Friday night at 7 o'clock. You've been involved in a car accident. You may be out of state on vacation or just a few miles from home. What do you do? Who do you call? At Farmers Insurance Group, one call is all you have to make. Hello, this is Jim Klein, an agent with Farmers Insurance. It's called One and Done. You don't have to wait till Monday morning to file a claim. You can make the initial call and we'll begin right away to help you. We assist you in moving the vehicle to a certified repair shop, getting you set up with rental car, and informing your agent. Then here at the staff at Jim Klein Farmers Insurance, we follow the claim through to the end. It's that easy. One and done. We're your one and done location for all your insurance needs. Auto, home, life, commercial, workers' comp, and bonds. We can help you with all your insurance needs. Give me a call today, Jim Klein, Jim Klein Farmers Insurance at 247-5400. Your one and done location in Kingsport, 247-5400. Now available Chick-fil-A, the crossings of North Johnson City, the Hash Brown Scramble, the first breakfast bowl with Chick-fil-A. The Hash Brown Scramble, a hearty breakfast option made with Chick-fil-A signature tot-style hash browns, scrambled eggs, a Monterey Jack and cheddar cheese blend, and a choice of sliced Chick-fil-A nuggets or sausage. Served with jalapeno salsa, the scramble can be enjoyed in a bowl or as a burrito. The Hash Brown Scramble Bowl, 30 grams of protein when made with nuggets. The bowl and burrito start at 349. Served until 1030 every morning, Monday through Saturday. The Hash Brown Scramble or Burrito, again at Chick-fil-A, the crossings in North Johnson City. Hi again to the Tom Taylor Sports Show. We're live again at Champion Chevrolet. We're the month of November. Of course, it's a brand new month, and that tells us we've got uh, GM employee pricing on select 2017 Silverados, Traverses, Tahoes, Suburbans, and Expresses, 20% off select 2017 Cruises, Malibus, Sonics, and Palas, or 0% for up to 72 months in lieu of 20%. So it's all available. Cletus, you going to be with me today? <coughs> Got you coming up in a few minutes. Cletus Green will wrap up the show today. There you go. Andy's out on assignment. But right now we got my man in the house, Dave Anji from the News and Neighbor. And he was with us yesterday and gracious enough to come back again today. Kind of do the uh, the follow-up of the 2017 World Series. Did it go like you thought it was going to go? It did not because I no. picked the Dodgers. Me too. So. <laughs> yep, you got it. I'm going to tighten my headset today because it's football day here, so uh, you get ready for that. But uh, <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll wrap up the baseball season. Yeah, I mean, that uh, – you know, the Dodgers were a great hitting team. You know, I guess the the postmortem on them, they, they just weren't a situationally good hitting team. You know, they had, uh, after going behind early last night, they had uh, two runners on base um, in five out of the first six innings and just couldn't get the hit to get them home. They were over 10 runners in scoring position. Yep. Just, uh, you know, and people will tell you, you know, people, status, statisticians that um, will swear up and down there's no such thing as clutch hitting. It's all, you know, just – the numbers bear, bear themselves out, but you know, just watching that game the other night, when it came time, um, those knuckles were a little white around the mm-hmm. the handle of those baseball bats, and they just didn't get the hits. They didn't get it done. And you know, credit to Houston, um, you know, for for getting the win. And and I really think the way they handled their pitching compared to how the Dodgers, with their system, you know, handled their pitching, 
I think going with the hot hand the way Houston did, if somebody was throwing well, they left him in there. Um, yeah, I think that paid off in the long run for them. George Springer, the MVP. Again, the Dodgers, one for 13 with runners in scoring position, left 10 on as a team. McCullers was not that good in early on. They had a chance to get him. In fact, he hit four. He hit four batters in two and a third innings of baseball. Anytime you get free passes to hit batsmen, you got to produce, and they did not. First inning, Dodgers lead off double. Later had the bases loaded, two outs, nothing. Second inning, leadoff single. Later had runners on first and second, one out, nothing. Third inning, runners on first and second, nobody out, nothing. And fifth inning, runners on first and second, one out, nothing. That's the story of the game. And also, you Darvish picks the worst time to have a sub. I and mean, they went out and spent big bucks to get this guy from the Rangers. Yeah. And again, here's the stat that jumps out at me. Game three was the first time in Darvish's big league career, game three of the World Series, that he failed to complete at least three innings and strike out at least one batter. The second time he did it was last night. Yeah, that's, that's all you need to know. That's the story of the game. Uh, opportunistic Astros take advantage of what the Dodgers did. They win it. They're world champions. They deserve it. And I know I was going to show you this picture right here. This is really pretty interesting. Yep. I'll go back to this. 2014, we showed you earlier in the show. In case you missed it, here we go again. Here's a picture of the 2014. Where is it here? There we go. 2014 cover of the world or the sports illustrated it says right there your 2017 world series champs <clears throat> are the houston astros and on the cover is the guy who goes on to be the mvp yeah. this is kind of spooky that, that worked That's out George pretty Springer. well looked out worked yeah. out pretty good so dodgers have to take the offseason scratch their head and say man we had a chance and didn't get it done it came down to this <clears throat> it came down to the fact that there were two pitchers on the market late in the summer you darvish and justin verlander and the Dodgers go for Darvish because obviously, you know, Darvish, his performance is much better. You look at Verlander, everybody thought he was over the hill in Detroit. Uh, his ERA was terrible. His win-loss record was terrible. He wasn't getting a lot of run support. He was a guy without a lot of motivation. And, um, you know, I think the Dodgers mistook that for him being a guy without anything left in the tank. And, and the Astros, to their credit, kind of saw him um, as being – a guy that, if put in the right situation down there with that young team, would get fired up, excited, and pitch like he used to. And he did down the stretch. I mean, uh, even though he didn't get the job done in game six, um, I thought his performance throughout the playoffs, the way he pitched, uh, really kind of propelled them forward. And Darvish, on the other hand, yeah, not, not going three innings in either of his starts, or not going two innings, that, uh, you know, that, that really is mind boggling for a guy that threw the ball well. So the postseason awards, we're getting into college football. Postseason awards right now, if you had to pick them, Who's your Cy Young Award winner in American League and National League? Oh, my goodness. That's uh, that's going to be tough for me. See, my problem is I, I put too much stock into what I see in the playoffs. You know, and, uh, you know, it's, and that's the beauty of the Major League playoffs in my mind is that if they were so compelling this year that <laughs> it's erased my memory of the regular season. But uh, definitely um, you, you look at what these guys did in, in the postseason um, – you know, Verlander's a guy that, since his half of the year was so bad, you look at him, he was a Cy Young quality pitcher by the time the playoffs roll around. But his first two-thirds of the season he spent in Detroit wiped that out. So, uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's going to be hard for me to pick those. But uh, I definitely love what I saw in the postseason. And, and, He's dancing. You know, this is good. Whatever happened, whatever <laughs> happened, you know, and there's a rumor, and I don't know if you've heard this, that they use different baseballs in the postseason than they use during the regular season. And I heard that one today, and that's kind of the explanation with you, Darvish, him being a big slider pitcher. You know, the baseballs apparently were going a little bit further, you know, for, from what I heard. And, uh, you know, that's the rumor. I don't know if that's been corroborated. But for pitchers that threw sliders, it was much harder for them to get the to control that pitch like they did during the regular season. So, um, yeah, just an interesting footnote, me covering myself for having no idea who should win the Cy Young Awards. We just heard the last three minutes of a really good <laughs> – wing job right there because the more he talked i thought you got a clue you know back in college <laughs> back in college they used to every once in a while they'd say we're doing a test we're gonna give you these blue books you got to fill them up right and sometimes you know not, not saying i was inattentive in school but there'd be a time or two i'd walk in and they hand me a blue book and i'm like what's this for you know and uh but but dutifully i would fill that book up from front cover to back cover and hope something stuck so. And dutifully, he answered the question <laughs> by not answering the question. Yes. So there you go. I need to run for something. Yeah, I'm thinking that's good. He's got political all over him right now. We're talking to my man Dave Anji. He'll be with us again this afternoon. It's a move-up time from here on in from 5 until 7 o'clock, the Championship Chevrolet 5-star football preview show. 
Got some good ones this week. Tennessee and Southern Miss. Kevin will be by to talk about that one. He'll preview the Vols game against Southern Miss. We're getting ready to talk about the Volunteers here in a second. Joe Vento will preview on the phone the Buccaneers and VMI game, a much-needed win for East Tennessee State on Saturday here in Johnson City Green Stadium. Also, Chris McCall, I saw him in the break room a few minutes ago. He is on cloud nine. He said, man, I got the game of the week. I said, you do, or one of them. Vautech, the Hokies in Miami, a huge football game for both programs and for the ACC and for a lot of postseason aspirations. So uh, he'll talk about that. Dave will showcase the Region 1 6 8 Big East football teams playing tomorrow night. Everybody plays at 7 o'clock. Involved with Science Hill, Farragut, Bearden, and, of course, Dobbins met up. And then Doug Fritz will be on the phone to showcase and kind of talk about all the other playoff games with the other five classifications. So all that coming up. 5 o'clock this afternoon right here at Championship. Well, be sure and like it and share it. The numbers continue to grow, and we thank you for that. And so that'll be a new start time. Why are we starting new? Because Daylight Savings, Daylight Savings Time is coming up on Saturday, and so the dealership closes in the winter months from here on into the spring to Daylight Savings Time back next spring. They'll close at 7 instead of 8. So unless Dave and I want to lock the place up and leave here at 8 o'clock, they said, Andy said, got to move it back to 7? No problem. So five to seven o'clock from here on in every every thursday for as long as we continue the show and uh, we have not been told when that's going to be so we'll just keep on keeping on because there's lots going on we got 10 football games to pick all college coming up here a little bit later on to the picking panel uh amy mcduffie of elizabethan's the winner this week uh andy dietrich by the way and the inside the champion showroom chevrolet picking panel between him and tim and uh Kristen. andy goes 10 for 10 so the prize amongst the guys inside and ladies inside the dealership was a pumpkin pie. So Andy gets a pumpkin pie later on this evening. We'll present that to him. He'll be back and we'll be able to present that to him. He's uh, To say he's gloating and rubbing it into everybody else is an understatement. It's been a little tenser this week because they all keep saying, how do he do that? Because Andy, uh, his prowess in predicting football games has not been all that good, although he's won the last two weeks. So we, Dave and I, the two-headed monster, we went eight for ten. Did you yeah, know that? that's good. That's solid. That's oh, yeah. better than I did with that old blue book back in the day. <laughs> but no, so, Andy, when he came over here last week, he had the eye of the tiger. Oh, he did. You saw it. I mean, he he was just focused. He yeah. didn't even give explanations. You no. just asked him, and he said, boom, there boom. it is. Boom. And 10 for boom. 10. He called this ten shot, and he gets Perfecto. a pumpkin pie, pumpkin as pie. he should. Yep. week before he won, he beat Tim. <clears throat> Got him a bag of M&M's. So he said, this week let's do a pumpkin pie because I'm going to win it. Yeah. And he did. So we'll do the picking panel a bit later on. we got some great college football games coming up. We're kind of kind of – Kind of showcase them here just for a few minutes, and then uh, we're going to jump in there and take a look at some college basketball, maybe a little bit of NASCAR, but uh, the continuing saga in Knoxville. Now we got a player apparently has been playing, uh, played last week with a concussion during last Saturday's loss to Kentucky. Uh, the read optional publication claiming the Vols coaching staff knowingly played offensive lineman Brett Kendrick for at least two quarters while dealing with a concussion during last Saturday's game at Kentucky. Report also states that Kendrick is now in concussion protocol, which he is. He is not playing this week, so uh, more problems just to say the least for Butch Jones and this Tennessee coaching staff. I mean, it just continues to go spiral downward, let does me, it not? Let me put my theory out there on that whole thing. Okay. Just from Tennessee watching Florida, right? Mm-hmm. So Florida got the situation where McElwain said, oh, they're giving me death threats, you know. Florida's like, wait a minute, you know, where's where's evidence of that, you know, and McElwain had to back off of that statement. So, in that case, when when people start doing stuff like that, you know, you the whole buyout that they have can either get eliminated completely. You can say you can fire somebody with cause. He lied to his employer about such and such, or you can at least knock that way down. See, the only thing that's keeping Butch Jones at Tennessee right now is that nobody down there wants to pay his buyout. Nobody at all. So I, I think they're starting to look for ways to say, hey, you know, he's he's acting in a way that allows us to either dismiss or it's a negotiating tactic, I believe. You know, this this media outlet that reported this, the read optional, I've never heard of them. And I would wonder <laughs> if there's anybody inside the administration in Tennessee that fed that story to this news outlet and say, hey, you know, something bad happened in last week's game, you know, and. Uh, they report it, and now it's out there. It's in the, and Butch is dealing with this every day. Now, when Butch's agent is sitting here trying to negotiate a buyout with Tennessee, that number gets a lot lower. So Tennessee won't have to pay as much, and they can get a better coach. And again, I don't know that, but it is just a very odd story to come out from that news outlet, which, you know, really honestly, so how nobody's long, ever heard of. How long have you been in the print media? I've been in the print media a long time, You've twelve never years. Heard of this, never heard of this read optional. I have not. I, I'll tell you this: there are there is. 
for a football program like Tennessee, there's about 25, 30, 40 blogs out there at least. You know, some people are journalists, some people aren't journalists, and, and I won't make a judgment on them because I, I don't know who runs that site. But um, it's just very odd to me that they're in the middle of trying to negotiate a buyout with Butch Jones, and this story breaks seemingly out of nowhere. Um, and it is a story that would be very damaging to Butch Jones getting his full buyout. So, you know, something to think about. I've got no evidence there, but that's one that is a skeptic. I look at that, and I wonder if there's not more behind the scenes than, than what meets the eye. We're talking a little setup maybe going on here? Is well, you know, it, it's something that I think um, may have happened, and it may have gone unnoticed. And there, there may be somebody with a vested interest in making sure that didn't go unnoticed. You know, that's, that's also something. But in fairness, you know, it's something every week with this football program. So it could just be run-of-the-mill, you know, uh, something that just happened naturally and got reported on naturally, and it just happens to be bad for Butch Jones in his quest to, to get his $12 million or whatever he has coming to him. Carmichael says, your previous guest says, that Jimmy Sexton, the agent for Butch Jones, they're just waiting until they find him a job. Yeah. Find him a place to land so they can get him out of there, do a buyout, and keep on trucking. He disputed what I said, but I said, well, if I'm reading this right then, he's holding up the Tennessee football team until he finds another job and he's going to leave. In the meantime, commits are doing that. I mean, recruits are decommitting. Uh, the fan base is upset. They're talking about boycotting the game Saturday night. So I said, are, are, am I reading this right? We're waiting on butch jones is agent to find a new place for him to go to so he can come back and say okay let's do the buyout because he's now going to go coach at xyz school am i reading that right because i told carmichael sounds sounds like to me it's very selfish and they're holding up the tennessee football program to make sure butch has a place to go he said no that's not the way it is and so he explained it you got you got to think of it it's a divorce we're just finding out who's getting the beach house and who's getting the truck and how that's all going to shake out. No, that's that's where we're at right now with this. I mean, you know, they're, neither all one right. of them want anything to do with each other anymore. I think it's to that point. But Butch wants to go, co- you know, coach somewhere else. And, you know, and they're to, I'm trying to negotiate the buyout. And that's what I'm talking about. That's what's going on behind the scenes here. And that's why a story like this is very damaging if you're Sexton and you're trying to get the biggest buyout possible for your coach as he goes on to coach somewhere else. Uh, what's beneficial for Tennessee, most of these buyout clauses have, you know, if a coach goes and coaches at another program, uh, the portion of money he makes there is subtracted from the amount of money Tennessee has to pay him uh, for his next year contract and, you know, whatever. Um, it'll save Tennessee money if it's in their best interest for Butch Jones to coach next year. So they're really rooting for Sexton to go out there and find something. I got um, you. And, and that's why we're at where we're at. I mean, you know, if it weren't for this giant buyout, um, which, by the way, happened when they upped Butch Jones's contract recently, uh, it's been a few years back. I think it was around the time the Michigan job opened, and Butch Jones was trying to float it out there that Michigan might be interested in him because he's highly interested in Michigan. Of course, Harbaugh got that job. But in that process, if you remember, they uh, extended Butch's contract and they raised his buyout, I believe, at that time. So it now um, is a situation where you know, they're, they're kind of paying for that. So, uh, But they're trying not to pay too much, and there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes uh, to help Butch save face a little bit and help them save some money and um, – you know, trust me, neither one of them wants anything to do with each other, which is making this incredibly awkward. We're talking to Dave Onge again from the News and Neighbor, the periodical, or not the periodical, publication, the weekly publication, over 30,000 circulation. Again, it's based right here in Johnson City in Washington County. It's a great paper. Got mine on the uh, got mine on the driveway yesterday. Good read. Yeah. So We've it's got a uh, basketball preview coming up November 29th. Got pictures of uh, all of our Washington County teams, UH, Science Hill, uh, Crockett Boone, Boys and girls, it's going to be uh, going to be a wonderful publication there coming out, and um, yeah, looking forward to that at the end of the month. All right, pick and panel. Here we go. Let's pick a couple of these games. We'll pick some more a little bit later. Well, the show's running out of time, so we'll pick what we can. Let's do five now and do the other five tonight. So again, go to and Amy McDuffie did it and won twenty-five bucks. So here's where you go: the pick and panel preview page. Boom, there it is. TomTaylorSports.com. Uh, we will have up here. Uh, who did Joel Ragsdale? Yep, will be there last week, and then this week Amy McDuffie will get Jeremiah to upload that for me. So, TomDunnerSports.com backslash football is all you got to do, and so you can go there and pick and see if you can't win this thing. And and good luck because it's uh it's a chance to win twenty five bucks. And Amy McDuffie's getting a check. You say, well, I live out of town, out of state. I don't know anything about the high school football games. Well, you're in luck because the way the playoffs are landing, we're now doing all college games, at least for the next couple of weeks, because we've got to pick them early enough the week before that I don't know who's going to be in the playoffs. So we're doing all college because there's still regular season schedules. So having said that, 
Here we go. Penn State, Michigan State. We're taking the Nittany Lions on the road and the Spartans at home. Taking Penn State. Penn State's a much stronger team, much better team. Uh, a lot of what's happened with Michigan State so far this year, they're, they're improved, but it's still smoke and mirrors. They don't have anything on defense that's going to stop Barkley. Now, we went 8 for 10 last week. I don't know what it is. I have not been able – I forgot all about to kind of keep it going. The week before, we were 7 for 10. So yeah. We were, were 15 out of 20 for the last two weeks alone. So pretty solid to go with what he says and I say and we need to go as together. I'll go with Penn State as well. Oklahoma to Oklahoma State. Some say Oklahoma. Some say Oklahoma State. I like the Cowboys in Stillwater. Who do you think we should take? Yeah, I think I'm going to go with Oklahoma State in that ball game. I can agree with you there. It's going to be a toss-up. Um, I just think that, you know, what we've seen in Oklahoma, Oklahoma this year, they're a good football team. I think uh, without Bob Stoops there, um, you know, there's there's a rookie coach. you got to remember that. And Gundy is a man. He's 50. So I'm going to take Oklahoma State in that ball game. We're taking Oklahoma State. We're taking Penn State. Clemson at North Carolina State. Is this a trap game for the Tigers, or are they still in the top ten? Is this going to be a business-as-usual win? The aura of um, – not invincibility, but the aura of greatness around NC State got dissipated pretty bad last week. And I think Clemson um, looked like a football team against Georgia Tech that's back on track after a bad showing at Syracuse. I think it's Clemson all the way in that ball game. Clemson all the way. Virginia Tech at Miami. Hokey, hokey, hokey high. We'll have Chris McCall previewing that game a little bit later on this afternoon at beginning at 5 o'clock. So Virginia Tech at Miami. Lots riding on this race or this game based on the race in the conference. Also, even bigger picture is the ACC and postseason play. And so, is it the Hurricanes or is it the Vautech Hokies in Miami? I think it's Virginia Tech in this game. I mean, they, you know, they've done a great job down there. Rick doesn't have all his pieces in place yet. He's coached them well, but they just don't have enough talent right now at this moment to be Virginia Tech. Hokey, hokey, hokey high. We're taking the Hokies to win that one. And then Iowa State in Morgan Hole. I'm sorry, Morgantown, West Virginia, to take on the Mountaineers. Dana Hogerson, Carmichael says he loses this game. They may start turning up the heat on him a little bit up there in Morgantown. So will he win or will he lose to Iowa State? Iowa State's a really solid football team, a rare defense in the, in the Big 12, and that's going to be enough. They're going to have enough to beat West Virginia. And uh, I'm, I am really curious – to see what happens with the coaching situation there um, and what they decide to do moving forward. I I have always been curious when that job, if it opens up again at West Virginia, and maybe your West Virginia listeners can chime in on this, would there be any sentiment to ever bring Rich Rodriguez back home? Now, I know there were a lot of problems when they left, but it's almost the same thing what we're seeing with Lane Kiffin in Tennessee where, you know, over the passage of time they realized, you know, the grass was pretty green when we were – you know, on, on the same side there. We just didn't realize it at the time. So that uh, we may or may not get to figure that out. But I would be curious to the people in West Virginia that listen to the show, where does Rich Rodriguez stand now? I Me, mean, hometown boy, did did well. Uh, local hero, took him to the verge of a national championship uh, before before leaving. I just wonder if that's something that would ever happen again. It's interesting. I thought the same thing as I, I was talking, listening to Carmichael. We're getting ready. To- Go ahead and pick these other five picks when we got the time. Next one up is Arizona Southern Cow, which is where Rodriguez is coaching. He said it wasn't for, for Kalawi Tate, the sophomore quarterback, kind of come out of nowhere that he's riding his coattails and that Rich may be on a short rope in Arizona. And I thought, what if he'd ever go back to West Virginia if would even welcome him back? Because he did not leave under good circumstances. People were pretty mad because he left to go to Michigan and then went on to Arizona. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Arizona Southern Cow. What do yeah, you think? I'm going to, I'm telling you, that Tate, that, that is. You know, for the system that Rodriguez has run since he's left, um, since he's left West Virginia, he hasn't really had a great quarterback. You know, that that's the thing. He kind of he had Denard Robinson at Michigan, but wasn't there long enough to enjoy the fruits of his labors there because he got fired before Robinson entered his junior year. Um, so this is a he finally has another great quarterback here, and I think that they've got a chance to go in and win at Southern Cal. Um, it's kind of an outside chance. Not enough to where I'm going to pick them. I'm going to pick Southern Cal in this game, but I wouldn't be shocked at all if that one ends up wrong and, and Arizona finds a way to win because that that kid is that kid's exceptional. I don't. What, what do you think about this one? You're playing at Southern Cal. Yep. Uh, let's see, let's look up the numbers here. Cause I'm kind of a numbers kind of guy. I'm on the fence on this one. Arizona six and two, Southern Cal seven and two. Arizona ranked 23rd. Southern Cal ranked 17th. I always give a nod to the home team just by here. They're chinny chin chin because it's at home, so I'll go Southern Cal. All right, we'll go Southern Cal, but don't be surprised. If Arizona wins. Yep. And then I'll hear about it next week. <laughs> there you go. 
VMI to East Tennessee State must win for the Bucks. They need one in the Southern Conference. Get them a W. They're playing the last place team. They're right above them. They're the next to last place team. Bucks or VMI Saturday? I'm taking the Bucks in this one. Um, they were very disappointed with the way they went up there and played in Lexington last year. So I expect ETSU. They've been reminded every day of the week about that score last year and how bad they laid an egg. I think they're going to be ready and they're going to win in front of the home crowd. Three more to pick in the college. It's all college this week. Top ten. So you can do the same thing. Just go. We'll show the website again. If you're out of town, in town. If you win, you're out of town. We'll mail you the checks. Not a problem. Auburn at Texas A&M. We take the War Eagles or the Tigers on the road. We take the Aggies at College Station. We're going to take Auburn in this ball game. I think Auburn's defense is good enough to win. And A&M, I just, you know, I have no faith at all in Texas A&M. That's, that's uh, they're, they're having a rough time there, too. It's a little bit overshadowed around here locally by what's going on at Tennessee. People obviously pay more attention to that. But Sumlin is in a bad situation there. And I, I don't know if they're focused enough to beat Auburn. I'm going to ask you the same question I asked Carmichael earlier in the show. Brett Malema, Arkansas, in trouble. Kevin Sumlin, A&M, in trouble. Gus Malzahn, Auburn, in trouble. Any of those three coaches fit at Tennessee, looking ahead? Uh, I, I really don't know. I, I don't think that's going to be the way it shakes out. I don't think any of those those three will be who ends up at, at Tennessee. Um, you know, I think all three of those guys will coach again. I don't think any of them will coach in the SEC, though, if they wind up getting let go. Uh, just kind of a gut feeling on that. So I think uh, – I think with Sumlin, um, you know, he's going to have to go somewhere else, maybe outside the Power Five to be able to prove himself again um, and, and move up. But um, he's probably the most promising coaching prospect of the of the three you're talking about. Stanford or Washington? Oh, man, that's a tough game, isn't it? Yeah, Stanford. They um, are 19, 18th ranked, six and two. Washington State, 25th ranked, seven and two. Yeah, it's uh, both of these teams have looked really bad in, in given weeks and then looked really good in other weeks. Um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and take Stanford in this game. I, I think it's the safer pick um, because Stanford, Stanford seemed to struggle more early in the season and they've rebounded a little bit, whereas Washington State, um, you know, some of their struggles have been as of late. So, yeah, let's go Stanford in that game. Last one is tonight, as a matter of fact. My team, my alma mater, the Thundering Herd of Marshall at 6-2 and two at Fort Atlantic at 5-3. and three. Whoa. Kiffin. Kiffin. Yeah, you're playing you're playing Kiffin with Lane uh, Kiffin. Doc Holliday versus Lane Kiffin. It's like Tombstone. It's like a comic book or something. It's like OK Corral. <laughs> the Tombstone. The showdown at OK Corral. Yeah. You know who I'm gonna go with. You're going you're going with Marshall. And you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pick you guys too, because uh six and two football team and I think uh I think they go down and get the job done. Well, in all seriousness, do you think Lane Kiffin can coach? And everybody's talking about him bringing him back to Tennessee, and he wants to go someplace and go up against Alabama because he doesn't like Saban, and wants to be a, a uh, burr under his saddle, so on and so forth. I'm asking the same thing I asked yesterday about John Gruden. Can he coach? And in this case, you gave me that answer. Can Lane Kiffin coach? I think Kiffin can coach. I, I think he's a guy who's in the need of a right situation, the perfect situation. I, I think uh, he's, he needs to go to a school with a very strong – uh, athletic director, preferably an athletic director who had been a head football coach himself, somebody like a Barry Alvarez or, you know, that, that one comes immediately to mind. Um, somebody that can mentor him a little bit and kind of keep him in line. He also needs a school that's going to give him the money to hire good coordinators, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Um, you know, and it just has to be the right place, a good environment. He's not a guy who can go somewhere and build his own culture, I don't believe, and, and do it his way and have things go well. I, I think he needs to go into a situation where he's plugged in as head football coach. Since we visited yesterday, the college basketball preseason bowl came out. Duke at number one. You okay with that? Yeah, why not? They, uh, <laughs> they win a lot of games every year. I, I'm going to tell you, um, with that, these young kids – you just don't know anymore until you get into January who has what. You know, some of these kids will come out and uh, and underperform immediately. Some of them will look great in the non-conference schedule when they're uh, when they're playing the non-power five teams, uh, the mid majors, and all that. Uh, and then it comes time to get into ACC play, and you know they disappear. So um, yeah, with all these freshmen playing nowadays, and so many so many people relying on the one and done players, man, it is uh, always a work in progress. Here's the top ten. Duke, Michigan State, Arizona, Kansas, Kentucky. Then comes Villanova, Wichita State, Florida, North Carolina, and Southern Cal. And for the Mountaineer fans watching, West Virginia preseason number 11 yep. in the country. So 
Uh, that's what's going on there in college basketball, which is right around the corner. It is Blue Nanza again tonight here locally. Both men and women's team will be at Freedom Hall, 7 o'clock for inner squad and slam dunk contest and three-point and meet the team, meet the coaches, and give away some prizes. It's all there at 7 o'clock tonight at Freedom Hall, Johnson City. We're back here from 5 till 7 with the champion five-star football preview show, which we love doing, and, and uh, we continue to get numbers that show that the show is growing, and we appreciate that very much. And so all we ask you to do is to like us and share us, send it out there to someone else. They can watch it too. And it's all about college football and high school football. We don't do the pros anymore. We're not going to do the pros. The only pro I talk about is Jason Witten, 82, class act out of Elizabeth. And so, uh, what, three catches, 31 yards last week in the win for the Cowboys. His longest catch was 16 yards. Hall of Famer for sure. Great guy, class guy. I'll mention him because he's a local boy or local man. But beyond that, no NFL for this cat. But lots of college, lots of high school tonight. Dave co-hosts the show. And uh, we got a big week talking about high school football, the playoff start, and a big week as we've just talked about college football that will – let these other guys weigh in on some as well. So we yeah. got a full plate. Definitely so. It gets real this week for the high school teams. It's win or go home. Uh, yeah, that, that brings out uh, even more drama than what you see in the regular season. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about it coming up in about uh, less than four hours out, 5 o'clock. It will be our start time from 5 to 7, the Champion Chevrolet five-star football preview show right here at Champion. That's the second truck coming in today full of brand-new pickup trucks. They sell them as fast as they get them. Look here, that's two four, six, I could count it, seven more trucks coming yep. in. And there was another truck came in earlier today with another load of brand new trucks. So they sell them. They're the number one Chevy dealer in the state and with good reason. See you back here in a little while. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Man with the blue book. <laughs> I'm going to go back and watch that little segment. That was that was yeah. good BS sessions I've ever been around in my yeah. life. I'm sorry, he was pontificating. I was. But back home it's... I was grinding, shooting the craps. I was grinding, so. grinding the gears in my brain, trying to who, who threw well in the regular season. What name can I throw? There you go. But man, I've seen you know it's yeah. been a month since it's been that a month. He yeah. slept since then, so yep. tore up a puzzle. <laughs> you know, I've, I've seen off. some things in the last month. <laughs> yeah. It's been a, a trying time at the Andre household. Yep. So. yep. I'll see you in a couple hours. All right, man. Looking forward to it. Quick break. We'll be right back. I think Cletus is going to join us to wrap it up here on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, lives are changed one heart at a time. Learn more at fca.org. American Import Auto Repair in Johnson City takes care of both male and female customers, but owner Kim Smith says they have a special care and concern for ladies. Being a female in what's considered a man's business, I understand the trepidation that women may have when they come to the shop. They feel like they don't know about cars, they might be intimidated, but that's not the way we do business. Everybody's treated the same. We take the time to explain anything that they have questions about, the repair, the process, the part. We want to make sure people are comfortable with what we're going to do to their vehicle and that they understand. We do cater to women in a sense. We have a real nice waiting room with nice Keurig coffee and flavored creamers, air-conditioned cushion seats, TV, everything a girl could want while she waits for her car to be fixed. American Import Auto Repair in Johnson City open six days a week. Call today at 913-3111. It's Friday night at 7 o'clock. You've been involved in a car accident. You may be out of state on vacation or just a few miles from home. What do you do? Who do you call? At Farmers Insurance Group, one call is all you have to make. Hello, this is Jim Klein, an agent with Farmers Insurance. It's called One and Done. You don't have to wait till Monday morning to file a claim. You can make the initial call and we'll begin right away to help you. We assist you in moving the vehicle to a certified repair shop, getting you set up with rental car, and informing your agent. Then here at the staff at Jim Klein Farmers Insurance, we follow the claim through to the end. It's that easy. One and done. We're your one and done location for all your insurance needs. Auto, home, life, commercial, workers, comp, and bonds. We can help you with all your insurance needs. Give me a call today, Jim Klein, Jim Klein Farmers Insurance at 247-5400. 
your one and done location in Kingsport, 247 5400. Now available Chick fil A, the crossings of North Johnson City, the Hash Brown Scramble, the first breakfast bowl with Chick fil A. The Hash Brown Scramble, a hearty breakfast option made with Chick fil A's signature tot style hash browns, scrambled eggs, a Monterey Jack and Cheddar Cheese blend, and a choice of sliced Chick fil A nuggets or sausage. Served with the jalapeno salsa, the scramble can be enjoyed in a bowl or as a burrito. The Hash Brown Scramble Bowl, 30 grams of protein when made with nuggets. The bowl and burrito start at 349. Served until 1030 every morning, Monday through Saturday. The Hash Brown Scramble or Burrito, again at Chick-fil-A, the crossings in North Johnson City. So there's my man, Cletus Green, the new car sales manager here at Champion Chevrolet. Good afternoon, sir. How you doing? I'm doing well. Hope you are. Yes, sir. We've wrapped up October, and here we are November the 2nd. Woo! Countdown to Christmas. We're down to 52 days, but GM employee pricing for the month of November. Tell us what that's all about. Well, first of all, let's not get to Christmas too quick. we still got to eat Thanksgiving. That's it. Three weeks from today, by the way. And I like to eat. <laughs> yes, we do. So, so, so let's, let's, let's not leave anything out there that includes food. Um... We do have employee pricing on a lot of vehicles. One of the biggest uh, we've had we've had incentives and things on most everything that I've got anyway. But uh, the Corvette, for one, has not had a lot of big incentives this year, and they are employee pricing. And if you own a '99 or newer Chevrolet, you get an additional three thousand dollars for loyalty. So right now, buying a Corvette is a uh, pretty good direction to go. Hmm. There's such one right here in front of us. Yes. We, we do have a good selection of them. Uh, this pricing, the 17s, this pricing gets us in a whole different window. That's a beautiful red convertible. We've got a gray Z06 and a white Z06 there in the foreground. And, uh, this is right here in the showroom. Check out a, what would you call that, candy apple red maybe? Uh, it is bright red. It is a beautiful car. That's a uh, convertible, right? Yes. That's a Grand Sport. Yeah. And what kind of incentives are on that right now? Well, that one's an 18, so there's not. The uh, the 17s have got GM employee pricing, which on that price car, because it's by percentage, on, when you get up in these, uh, you know, 60, 70, $80,000 cars, your percentages go up uh, very high. So it gets it, uh, which in turn gives you more money off and gets you a better car, a better price on the car you want. Don Cletus Green, you can see the new car sales manager, Champion Chevrolet. Andy will be along later on this evening. We'll make the presentation for the champion pumpkin pie of Andy Dietrich. So that's going to be pretty cool. That so it will. He went 10 for 10 will. last week, which is unheard of, to the picking panel. And everybody around here is just stunned that he did that. How much How him. much of a bribe did that cost him? <laughs> 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 Including Tim Coven, they were stunned that he went 10 for 10. But he's got him a special pumpkin pie coming. There you go. He didn't even realize it was football season, and he went 10 for 10. <laughs> Man, he has taken some grief. He has taken some grief over this. But Tim said this is a new week. So, anyway, we're talking to my man, Cletus Green. So, you got the 17s uh, and GM employee pricing. Again, by definition, GM employee pricing is? Well, that's what the manufacturer's employees of the manufacturer can buy the vehicle for, uh, and which is, you know, a, a big discount since their employees are part of their contract, but that allows everybody to do it uh, at this time. And it is, it's it's not a set percentage, but it is a percentage. So, of course, you know, on a $15,000 car, it won't be near as impressive as it would be on a $50,000 car. Yep, that kind of goes without saying. But you have uh, select 2017 Silverados, Traverses, Tahoes, and Suburbans. 20% off on select 2017 Cruises and Malibus and Corvettes and Sonics and Impalas, or you go 0% for up to 72 months in lieu of the 20%. Yes. So if you were shopping, which way is it better to go? 0% 72 or 20% off? Typ- typically, the uh, the money weighs. Uh, occasionally, if, if the rebates are really low the, and they do zero, they've done it on Suburbans when they've had a $1,000 rebate, the 0% way outweighs it uh but you have to pay all the payments to make the savings the savings you're betting on the future yeah. uh 
uh, you know, if you trade every six months, zero is not your friend because right. your payoff's going to be whatever that percentage cost you in rebate that you didn't get to be able to get it. But if you uh, get one to keep one, if you get one to keep one, it could pan out. And you just have to you just have to look at it. You, it every deal, we just have to look at both of them and see. Because if you're going to if the uh, if you give away four thousand dollars and the interest on that loan would have only cost you two thousand dollars, you just gave away two thousand dollars. Yeah. And it, we do get people that get fixated on I've got to get zero because that's the but if you have good credits, you're going to get a good rate. And if you can get their money and a good rate, sometimes that can pan out. Now, we, we have different situations and that pan out differently. We, we usually try to look at both. And if one is way outweighs the other, we try to make sure that they at least know the direction and then they can choose from there. And Chris McCall, one of the finance managers, said uh, virtually anybody walks through these doors, we can get them bought. He is a very good finance manager, yeah. so he gets a lot of things done. So if your credit's not where it should be, it's a little shaky or whatever, however you want to define it, come on in anyway because there's, like he said, he uses between 25 and 30 financial institutions to get people bought. We have a uh, large selection of people that will help us. Uh, we work hard to get it done. And, uh, you know, there's there's dealers that will say that, and they don't care what it costs you to get done. And we're, we're not really in that book. We're trying to get it done in your favor because, you know, when you get this, uh, whatever may be a problem today straightened out and you can do whatever you want to we want to make sure you come back and see us sure repeats <laughs> name of the game and you have a lot of those a tremendous amount of repeats tremendous yeah you got traffic out here today a beautiful day beautiful fall day and uh, again weather forecast going to be great all the way through next weekend i saw the extended forecast so it really is unseasonably warm and so warm weather this time of year brings them out do folks come out shopping for the holidays too? I mean, we talked about Thanksgiving. Christmas. Depends on depends on the holiday. Uh, typically not. Now they will. Uh, we'll get a lot of business uh, around the holidays, but as far as the 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 day before and after, a lot of times not. Right. But when we get uh, like Christmas, we generally get a lot of traffic from Christmas, New Year's, and that's and I guess people didn't get what they wanted, yeah. <laughs> so they, they come get it themselves. Companies that decide they need to get things done before the end of the year. Hopefully, they figure that out a little sooner, so we have time to find them something. Because when they don't, it gets difficult. They get in here and they got we got three days to try to find something that they've got to have done by a certain date. Uh, so if if they're in that category, we hope they show up a week or so early, so we have time to hunt them and get what they need in here. And uh, folks that come in here with a handful of money after Christmas, that's a lot of times they come in looking for a vehicle because they've got money for Christmas and said, I want a new ride for 18. Exactly. There you go. GM employee pricing on select 2017 Silverados, Traverses, Expresses, Tahoes, and Suburbans. 20% off on select 2017 Cruze, Malibu, Corvettes, Sonics, and Impalas. While we've been sitting on the show today, two trucks have gone up the hill carrying brand new pick em up trucks. So, uh, as fast as you get them in, you turn around, they kind of fly out of here pretty quick, don't they? They come in and out uh, very heavily. We get as, as high as 800 cars. Uh, our downside's usually somewhere just just under five. So we keep a, we keep a big inventory depending on the time of year. Uh, we've got a lot to look at. We've got trucks in about any configuration you can get them and about any color combinations you can get them. So if you're looking for something, you know, you can go somewhere where they've got 10 or 15. And uh, or you can come up here where I got 150. There you go. And uh, it's real simple. It's just it's a numbers game. It's called selection and quality and customer service all rolled up in one. And anything you want to take a look at is on the website at championjc.com. So there you go. And again, the new hours here they close at seven o'clock now for the winter months. You remember daylight savings time is coming up Saturday, so you set your clocks back an hour, so it's going to be getting darker earlier, beginning on Saturday night, Sunday morning. And so with that, the dealership closes at 7. That's yes. why we're moving our show up to 5 to 7 starting today. So there you go. What are you going to leave us with? What's, that, what, what's that ring? We keep looking at that ring. You got that ring. We do. Uh, we get those rings. The salespeople get them. I got it as a salesperson. And uh, you sell 100 new Chevys in a year, and they send you a ring. And then every year you do it after that, they put a diamond in it. You got a bunch of diamonds in that ring. About 15. <laughs> he's smoking it. There you go. Now he's the new, new car sales manager here at Champion Chevrolet. Good job, Cletus. By the way, I like like the backdrop here at the studio. Got to give you props every time you're over here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He's working on a new one. If our folks can ever get the thing done right, we'll leave that alone for now. But and by the next time, I won't call him out if it's not done. But we've got a new one. He's going to fix up, help me fix up. So wherever I go, we'll have. Uh, we'll have the 
champion. Well, I guess we could put champion by drop on it wherever I go. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Good. Yeah, Tim and Andy wouldn't care about that. So, anyway, uh, we appreciate you very much, and he's a good guy and, and uh, just one of the great folks here at Champion Chevrolet. They do a superb job. Taters, thank you. We're going to wrap this thing up. We appreciate my man Cletus Green stopping by here, and again, we'll go to the screen. There you go. So we're getting ready to uh, boogie on out of here. We'll do just that. We will come back and rejoin you again coming up at 5 o'clock for the Champion Chevrolet Five-Star Football Preview Show. Big weekend of college football, obviously. You saw some of the games we're picking on. And, again, you can go to the picking panel. Tim's already picked his. And so we'll see if it gets him a win this week. Again, go to TomDillerSports.com backslash football. Eugene Jeffers, Greenville, Tracy Clark, Kingsport, Brenda Byron, Elizabethan, Raymond Tackersley, Kingsport, Jerry McNeil and Tony Briggs from Elizabethan. Also, Joel Ragsdale goes here from Kingsport. And another one we're going to add by tonight, Amy McDuffie from Elizabethan. So, Elizabethan folks watching the show, we appreciate that very much. So, uh, we would encourage you to, again, uh, get on there and pick TomDillerSports.com backslash football. You have until midnight tonight because some of these games are rolling in this evening. So, you have until midnight tonight to make your pick. We're out of time. We sincerely thank you for yours. Again, we're going to rejoin you again, as we said, coming up. We're going to do that at 5 o'clock right here today again on the Champion Chevrolet Five-Star Football Preview Show. So for my man, Cletus Green and Tiffany Tiffany Willis from the Mountain States Health Foundation, also Karen Hubs of the Goose Chase, Carmichael from the John City Parks and Rec, and from Dave Angie from the News and Neighbor, this is Tom Taylor telling you as always till we meet you again at 5 o'clock for the big high school and college football preview show right here on the Facebook and also on TomTaylorSports.com. Till we greet you at 5 o'clock, we'll tell you again as always. Uh, win or lose, be a good sport. Thanks for giving us a listen. Like it and share it, please. And we'll see you at 5 o'clock right back here for our Champion Chevrolet 5-star high school and college football preview show. So long, everybody. <laughs>